Yep. And welcome once again to Legend of the Drowned Isles. This homebrew 5th edition D&D campaign uh, for which uh, I am largely to blame, uh, but hopefully occasionally uh, to thank. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One. I am the GM uh, and the host and the general dog's body for this game. Uh, I want to thank you for joining us once again. Episode 39 that we've uh, we've streamed or broadcast or put up one way or another. Uh, if you're watching live, you may be going, but wait, Mark, where's the previous session? And the answer is behind schedule. But uh, it did go up on Twitch last week and uh, will be going up on YouTube very shortly. In any case, uh, I have around me assembled a bunch of people, slightly rearranged uh, for your convenience and theirs. Let's start here. With the I'm, players. I'm Murray. I play Elzara. I am sick, so I might run off and cough, and that's why the change of seating. <laughs> yeah, hopefully no random uh, disappearances, but it might happen. For every one of you watching at home, the exits are this way. <laughs> uh, Please I'm, move to this the... way. It's true. I'm Jody, and I play Clark, the uh, half orc fighting rogue, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll see some interesting things happen to him today. Oh, there you go. I'm Pat. I'm playing Emrun Alisar, Wood Elf Cleric, and uh, he's just met back up with his friends again. Hey, I'm Nax. I'm playing Zakis, half elf wizard, and I'm just taking a nice little break right now. <laughs> okay. Relaxed at ha not having lost the pillar. <laughs> let us uh, let us return back then and at the short recap. I, I noticed too. Yeah. Yeah. You, you fixed it, but I don't think you saved it. How did I? That's fine. <laughs> Excuse me, while I live change the universe. Uh, oh, you know what? I did save it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Let's just put that there and go to <clears throat> the actual scene that I made, which has the correct oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> labels on it, because I had a feeling that I might need it. Uh, so yes, thank you very much for pointing that out. Uh, that you, your existence uh, is corrected now. Uh, I think now, now they're, they're going to bug me because they're not quite straight. Anyway, like I said, general dog's body. I control the horizontal and the vertical. However, we return to this game. In the land of shadow, this strange closed-off realm in which it seems the dead have come for reconstruction, perhaps, depending on who you uh, talk to. A dreaded realm of shadow. In shadow, having the tree Yggdrasil launch itself or be, be existing once more from a small seed, you all gathered and decided after some interaction with uh, God Marius, the being Marius, to return back to the Temple of Demosne, where you had left one of what had been described earlier as one of the white pillars, one of the bones of Paluxia, one of these essences of power and purity, which seemed oh, so out of line with this terrible place. You had left it in the keeping of Speaker Ordo, a uh, halfling, halfling? Yes, I think so. A halfling uh, priest of, the, of Namazani, who you'd helped before when the temple was under attack. You turned into wisps of the wind and traveled through the ever encroaching and still somewhat hostile land of festering and then approached the temple of Namazni. Flying inward you discovered some strange figure standing just outside the door of the temple shouting angrily and discussing with Ordo on the inside who seemed strangely calm and uh, unconcerned you discovered this winged demon to be called Azkazix in the service of Peturo. Mostly the questions that they were discussing were about where, presumably, all of you were, and if the bone was still inside the temple. While frustrated, Azkazix didn't seem particularly dangerous isn't quite the right word motivated for danger at the moment despite the large swords you carried on her, carried on her hip you approached cautiously most of you some of you a little more openly than others and began to ask and Azkazix had indeed been sent by Peturo to find you 
to ask you for a meeting and to retrieve this bone of Paluxia. Meanwhile, back in the land of Omesha, the place where all of you have come from, hard work has been uh, going on at the brand new temple of Paluxia in Vatudren. Amrun trying to wrangle his followers and his dubious allies into making sure that everything moves smoothly, all while trying to build up both the reputation and the physical presence of the temple. <laughs> During that time, a miracle happened. The statue, still unfinished of Paluxia that Amrun had been so hard to working on, suddenly started to weep tears of water. News of this spread, and indeed, it did seem like a perfect miracle. But Amrun noticed that his friends were missing, started to look for them, inquiring about and finding very scant clues, being led at one point to the abandoned estate, which Elzera was set to restore into a grove as it had once been many, many years ago. Finding no further path forward, he returned and retreated back to the temple, continued on his work, ever thinking about how he might find his friends. He discovered, unfortunately, some treachery within the ranks of the temple. Galen had been selling indulgences, basically turning money for prayers. People had seen the, and witnessed the miracles and heard of the great rising of Paluxy in the land, and they wanted a little bit of that to rub off. And sure enough, where there's an opportunity, there's usually someone to take advantage of it. It also seemed that Catherine, who most of you know, well, would know, actually, sorry, none of you except Amrun knows, is actually the hag Horfrost. She seems to have been getting rather close to Galen as well. A confrontation happens. Galen is dismissed, but that isn't the only member of the temple to leave. Uh, checking my notes here. Uh, yes. Do, 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 do. We now wait for Mark to catch up to his notes. Yes. Um, oh, for some reason I didn't include that. Well, no, actually, I don't. I there don't, were two others that two others that left. Yeah. Uh, I didn't confront him, but there have been two others. Yeah, left. two others left. Uh, Otno left to join the library, and Breda left to... Well, you're not exactly sure, but you did talk a lot, a lot about the impressive nobles and rich people around. Mm -hmm. She has to do her own thing. Exactly. You attracted attention even from the council members. You know ex at least Alistair had, had explicitly dropped by, although you suspect the word has reached the rest of them by now. Also, the priestess Miyazana Fahana dropped by of the Temple of Namazani, seemingly impressed. Later, her, um, well, you're not exactly sure what role Zinzlor plays in the church, but he always seems to be at the front door, mm. came to you with a message from her to come because she knew that his friends were in danger and how to get to them. He followed her into the heart of the temple and then passed down a pathway he had never seen before, not an uncommon occurrence in the Temple of Namazani, which seems to defy most people's interpretations. It was a long journey, a journey which blurred and bended time. By the time it was over, one way or the other, Amrun knew that not minutes, not hours, but years had passed since he left. He doesn't know exactly what that means, but he has felt this in his very bones. At that point, he saw before him another exit. Yazana Fahana stayed behind, telling him that she would try to keep the way clear, but that it wouldn't last, that she would return home. This would not be his return. Shadow had engulfed that end, the pathway itself seeming to be eaten. He emerges into a temple that looks exactly like the temple he had just left except for one important feature, Clark walking around the corner almost into him. Sure enough, he had emerged in the temple of Namazani in the shadow. Reunited, there was little time to talk. At that point, Clark was already in the process of trying to take the bone out of the bag of holding, which itself had seen some stress at trying to keep such a powerful object enclosed. 
finally managed to to uh, retrieve that just in time for Radix to give some warning to Alzera. There was something on the ridge. That something turned out to be a lizard man and more beyond moving in, trying to attack, although it seemed in the end to distract as another creature appeared beside the bone and tried to make away with it. They were all dispatched pretty handily. And you found yourselves reunited once more. The pathway to Paturo is dangerous, as Kazix had told you. And she was going to arrange for travel. That travel would take at least several spans of time. I was going to say an hour, but time is meaningless here. It's always kind of confusing. But it was going to take a span of time, a time which you could rest and reunite. And now you find yourselves in the temple. Outside is calm. You see Azkazix with their bright, or sorry, large black wings pacing, essentially, outside, seeming impatient, also seeming like she's on guard, waiting for any more that might strike. You've now reunited. Amrun is here, looking much the same as he did the last time you saw him. Something a little bit different, but it's hard to tell what it is. They look quite a bit different. In particular, Clark now has, well, how would you describe it? It's a yellowy, diseased-looking eye. With and a, also... With a matching <clears throat> scar that goes with it. And seems to be moving much slower than he was yeah. before. Also, in front of you, what they have said, in the very brief words they've had a chance to, a long... Not stone, but in fact bone. Carved a little bit, but you can feel the very essence, that connection you've made with Paluxia is expressed by it. Everyone's hugging the pillar off the corner. <laughs> um, it's, it, touching it does give a sort of almost ecstatic feel to you. Mm. It glows, it gives off power clearly. Uh, but it has been, you can see, <coughs> carved uh, with mm. iconography. And you're not really sure what exactly. It's hard almost to make it out. It glows so brightly, the edges of whatever's been carved get, carved get obscured. But you find a moment of breath. Wow. Would you like me to try to heal that? Welcome to hell. Yeah. Mm. No. It feels like that. As you did wish. You, did you die too? How did you get here? No. Did you guys die? Well, no, but apparently when people die, sometimes they end up here. This is a land oh. of the dead. A grindstone for souls. Which apparently isn't working, because I'll look outside to make sure uh, Askazix is not listening, because Pichiro hasn't been doing his job. And apparently this is you what we're trying to fix. You mentioned Pachiro earlier. He's not a bad guy? I thought he was one of the four big evil things. Sasora was apparently working for him, but... uh. Apparently it involves a love triangle between Poxia and Pachiro mm -hmm. and... Ignis? Ignis. <laughs> um, we should go see the murals. There are murals? Yes. Uh, Ordo, can you show him the murals? The one downstairs where it said, like, it, there was, like, pictures depicting, like, everything, the history between Paluxia and Paturo. Well, I, I, I mean, I certainly can, if that's what you'd like to do. I can put on some tea, too. Yes, to both. Well, one at a time. Is anybody hungry? No. For real food? I don't remember what that for, is. For, for me food? Yeah, good enough. <laughs> um, it tastes like something. Ish, yes. Um, yeah, I'll uh, cast. Uh, like, Pluxia, yeah, please feed these people and cast. Uh, what was that? Create food and water. Okay. What are you creating? Uh, um, let's see. Steak dinner. Ooh. A nice salad. What does... What 
does uh, Takis eat mostly? Usually whatever food's at the library. <laughs> He's not too fussy. Books. <laughs> whatever meal it was, we had the time I was at the library. Like okay. mashed potatoes and something. Or I think, yeah, I think it was like a, a, a roast of beef or something. Uh, and there'll be extra in case uh, the halfling mm. uh, wants to eat too. It's not much, although perhaps uh, Elzera can spice it up some. Well, you you begin the prayer to Biloxia and call upon her presence to to do what you've done a number of times before, provide mm. sustenance. It's not, while it can take the shape and has some of the vague texture of the food that you're looking for, it is featureless and bland and generally all has exactly the same texture, except that it doesn't. Before Clarg appears, a wonderful, fresh steak, steam still streaming off of it. It's uh, running with the fresh uh, liquid as if it just came off of the, the grill, a small amount of greens on the side. The, a bowl appears made out of a turned delicate wood with a large salad, fresh uh, lettuce as if picked from the garden this morning, small uh, uh, tomatoes and a few uh, peppers that, that feel like they've just been freshly picked. The smell wafts up into your face. In front of you is in fact uh, a, a, a full parcel of a shepherd's pie freshly made and and with salt and pepper shaker side sitting beside it and a small amount of uh, of uh, or actually a full rounded chocolate cake sitting there beside you on all of the food comes vivid and the smell the taste all of this for the three of you kind of makes you ache a little bit like a long forgotten joy, like something that you had come to accept to never see again. All of it appears, a large vase filled with water that's fresh and almost sparkles as if caught by sunlight. All Clark is it. already eating. Just, just put that out there. Well, it doesn't normally work that well. Well, your cooking is certainly And good. you can feel you. The, the wave of energy coming from the bone Mm. as well as it seems to I almost build a platform on which all of this to sit. I think it comes from the presence of my goddess. Uh, so yes, dig in while it's here. Ordo is wide-eyed and just looking at a Maybe mound of freshly, yeah, freshly yeah, baked darling. buns that he's just sort of like poking at oh, as butter. if amazed. Uh, and he kind of grabs one and just breaks it open under his nose and his eyes are just the size of saucers. And he just sort of breathes it in for a while before chewing his way through this bun. It is a banquet that you did not expect to have. This is amazing. I uh, <laughs> kind of forgot what bread was like. This is a, truly a blessing. Uh, Nemozini does not <laughs> usually... Well, we don't really worry about flavorful substances it's more of a god this is good <laughs> just sort of stops and trying to explain and protect his own goddess I think there might be a connection from the temples now hmm Did something happened here recently ish chop 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 oh the, the tree of leaves. as you as you finish the steak like you've literally been just like chopping mm. it you look down and there's another full steak behind where it was as so if it, you hadn't it touched it underneath all. <laughs> that one I can resist. <laughs> They'll slow down a bit. Uh, it feels strange that the warmth coming from within as you, as you eat. Uh, again, nothing you've eaten here has had any sort of substance to it, it feels like. Uh, nothing you've needed to eat as well, but not having anything and not needing it is not the same as still not, uh, does not wanting it. And Emery, you also dig through the salad and find that it is not diminished at all. Thank you for this. Oh, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. I wish I could do it this way more often. Uh, if anything's changed... I, uh, I've disattuned from the doll. Okay. The seed of Yggdrasil, the world tree, was planted in here recently. 
and it grew. Say so what? And it grew. It grew. It grew until it reached the ceiling of the place. It also, I'm married here, to it. There. Yeah, did you display the ring? What? So around her finger is this solid wood ring outside like bark. That's fine. We at the church belong to you. Do not judge. Wait, you, you're Congratulations, married. says Ordo. You're married to the tree? Yeah. How does that work? I don't know. What will the babies look like? <laughs> so if you have some kind of connection to it, do you know which exit goes where? No. Curses. As Elzara so, has to dip to the back, the intake of food also overwhelming and other meditating. sort of things she hasn't had to do for a while. Mm, salad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the tree so was tree of Yggdrasil? Yeah, so the seed was planted. The you can make a history check. If you Are you trained? You might not be trained, but you mm, can still make one. So. No, I'm not trained in history. I'm trained in religion. He is aware sure. of the branch being taken from the Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I, I would have explained it back then what it was. Natural twin. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you do clearly remember, first of all, <laughs> the, the, the research on the branch of Yggdrasil. Hill. The branch of it, which was stolen by uh, the uh, Wild Hunt, uh, or was one of the things that they were, they were trying to steal from the library a long, long time ago. The seed is new. You hadn't heard anything about that before. But if Yggdrasil was real, and there was cause to believe that it was, and maybe that was a true branch, uh, this seed is one of the most probably fundamental elements of the universe. Or was, until it became the truth. This isn't the same seed that you were looking to plant in Vitor, is it? No. Okay. Well... That still needs to happen. Because... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I noticed... Does the temple always glow? No. It always glows for me, but if you're seeing it, then I guess no. Because the one back in Vitor is glowing as well. Oh! And that's where I came from. Vitor! Oh, I remember that place. <sighs> it's a wonderful I point place. down a hallway and say it's about ten years that away. Oh, that's new? I uh, didn't know we could do that. Yeah, uh, neither did I. Uh, I can't do that. Um, All things are connected, or so some of the teachings say. Uh, uh, it's difficult to explain to members who haven't gone through initiation, but um, imagine that the world exists as a song and is heard by all living creatures, uh, then some people get one verse and some get another, but it is all part of the same song and therefore connected. But sometimes a, a variant of the song is in another place and feels like it's disconnected, but in truth it's, it's all one song. And the tree now connects the shadow to our world and dozens of others. Well, that makes sense. So Maybe some they're... some world somewhere has a dragon problem. I I hope it's not ours. Did you see any dragons before coming here? No, Good. not myself. Um, well, that could. Have, I mean, if there's something breaking the the barrier, then that maybe could explain how she sent me here. Uh, I will say that I have felt very little of the song for a long time it does feel like it sings stronger now I'd like to give the <laughs> coke um well uh yes uh, then uh please uh, enjoy and yes if you, if you could show me those before we leave I would like to at least take a short look at them and it orders like halfway through another bun. It's like, oh, my, uh, well, yeah, yeah. To be honest, I'm not completely surprised that the the gods are that the gods live the lives of one of those uh, more dramatic plays. Um, some people like to think that they're like above, uh, beyond all this, but most of the ones we've encountered just seem like us if we were given godlike powers. 
We should talk later. After you've seen the thing. Sure. Uh, and I'll wait until Ordo. Ordo. Mm-hmm. Ordo. Ordo. Okay. Um, has had their fill. You say, you might not want to eat a whole lot. I don't know what ha- I don't. I mean, it's sort of real ish food. Uh, I wouldn't want anyone to get sick. It certainly feels and tastes real. Um, for you, it's, it is as though you're eating a, a normal meal because yeah. you haven't been without one, although it has been a while. Mm. I, I eat as well. Um, but for the rest of you, it is... It is Heavenly. Yeah. Real food. <laughs> Absolutely real food and filling and, uh, and fulfilling, strangely. But you eat for a while. Do you talk more or do you want to move away from here? Just chit chat more about like general topics, like how we came here, which we know now. But. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Amron will tell people what uh, whatever he knows has happened since they since they left. Uh, Things have been remarkably time. quiet in some ways since they since they've been gone, except for the temple itself. Uh, I'm going to test something. I'm going to um, <clears throat> put one of the random pieces of clothing that I currently have strapped to my bag on my back into the torn bag of holding. Okay. You can see that its seams are, are popped in a number of places and kind of stretched out, uh, but you put it in, uh, and it takes a second, and then vanishes. And I take it out. Uh, make a wisdom saving throw. Uh, am I attuned to that thing? Well, you don't have to be attuned to the bag to use it. No, but her, she has a thing. I have a thing that gives me advantage face. on. Oh, sense. right, right. But I'm not sure if I'm attuned to it or not. I think it was a ring, was it? Uh, no, I'm not attuned to it. Uh, but that is a 29. 29? As you hold your hand over the top of the bag and, and will the item to come back, there's a moment of this weird vertigo as you find yourself leaning slightly into the bag and your hand dips in and grabs onto the thing and pulls it back out. Does it work? No. Well, you pulled the thing back out after you put it in. Yeah, but I shouldn't feel dizzy doing it. Dizzy? I throw it at him. The bag? Yeah. I'll I examine the outside of the bag. Okay. Uh, make an arcana check. Got a natural one? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, aside from a little bit of stretching, it looks fine. Okay. Can I take a look at it? I have some experience with making things now. Can you fix it? Uh, Probably possibly. not here. Uh, yeah, that might not be a good idea, but... Uh, I'll pass. Just, I'm ruining the bag. All right. Make an Arcana check. You can see that it's worn. <laughs> That's not good. If it's 11. another natural one, that'd be hilarious. No. 11. Uh, I mean, it... It clearly shows signs of having been stretched out, and you can see along the edges where the seams would normally be, almost be invisible in an item like this. Some of them have popped out, some of them have stretched out. You can see a little bit of, of the inky blackness of the inside of the bag through them. Um, it's really hard to judge uh, from the outside, mm. but it doesn't look great. Yeah. But apparently, it still works. I think keep it. Like bound up somewhere, maybe, and I can, I might be able to fix it when we get back. But uh, I I mean, we'd need supplies to do so. So you uh, can keep I it. You it, only a new one that actually works. Well, if we can fix this one for a cheaper amount, you can have that one back. Huh, that's no, neat. I'm getting a new one. <sighs> Fine, fix it myself. I broke his. You broke hers. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go breaking mine. Not yet. Don't go breaking my back. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, I, I think just maybe keep it wrapped up in something just to make sure there's no yeah. stress put on it. But it, well, yeah, but it, it might not work much longer if we. You try it. it. I'll grab the bag back from my room. Okay. Is there anything I can throw into it? I mean, there's food around, but <laughs> you're not really sure I'll if it exists. Bun. Okay. Oop. Okay. Toss it in, and it kind of weirdly sort of hovers on the horizon. 
disadvantages. Which isn't supposed to happen. It I'm gonna, happen? Uh, it it's not really be how it's seen yeah. before. It, it yeah. instantly vanishes before. I'm take but, a, like, like two steps away. Yeah. Okay. It's a little yeah. weird. <laughs> so it's in the bag now. Done. Okay. Make a wisdom saving throw. And that's, I'm not going to forget to add my proficiency bonus this time. Twelve. Twelve. So you put your hand inside and you concentrate on bun. You also kind of realize that that's a little vague, but there shouldn't really be anything except for the bun in there. Bread. And you start to concentrate on it a little bit. And it feels a little bit like you're trying to grab something through water. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of weird resistance. And then some of these... Your hand seems to be stuck. And you see him holding the bag, and his hand now is about about a four or five inches into the bag. And you, you can't really pull your hand out. It's in there somewhere. Clark really? draws Lucille. <laughs> strength check? Focus uh, on the bun harder? Okay, make a strength check. Pull hand out. Are you fucking shitting me? That's another one. Another one? As you grab onto the side of the bag to pull on this to pull your hand out, you can hear the distinct sound of popping stitches as the, the, the stressed uh, binding on the side gives way a little bit more. A little bit of, of, uh, of bending of light seems to appear around that side, and uh, the rest of you see the bag kind of strangely bulge and warp. It is almost as though you've taken uh, a magnifying glass and just illuminated that one spot which seems to bulge and twist. It's in there somewhere. I'll and move your, my hand the other Your way. hand kind of dips a little bit further now. You're now up to just above the, show, the uh, elbow. Dispel magic. On okay. The no, that's going to break it. Uh, uh, make uh, it make a, a casting roll. I believe, or is it a casting roll? Or it's is it a... Uh, is it, I, I know it's plus my casting bonus. I think that's it. Quick. I don't think we add proficiency to it. Uh, make a real quick check here. I don't think it's going to matter at all to three. Ability check using your spell casting ability. Yeah, so six. Six. As you as you call upon Paluxia uh, to... Uh, to In the presence of the bone. <laughs> in, in the presence of the bone to push mm -hmm. the, uh, the magic aside, um, you see another stitch pop. And you're pretty sure that was not the effect you were looking for. Uh, I can feel it. Just maybe this way. So how do you want to proceed? You have a choice as to which approach you want to try to do. You can try to pull out physically. You can try to... I'll maneuver my hand, because it's like now I know which side I'm not supposed to push on. I'll okay. maneuver my hand the other way, and then okay. grab the bun and pull it out. Okay. So Clark moves to Zachus's back side. Okay. So I back up. So are you, are you trying to brute force this, or are you trying to finesse this? Finesse it. Okay. So that's going to be uh, a different role. Uh, that is going to be a, let's call it a wisdom check. Does that so mean it's, your, it's use your, or... uses your, uh, no, because there's no, well, use your arcana bonus, but your wisdom stat. So your arcana should be, like uh, I think, double your proficiency at this point, but subtract your intelligence modifier from it, and then yeah, add your be, wisdom modifier. What's your wisdom mod? Plus two, so that would be 12. Okay. So what? They well, should have uh, your proficiency bonus is five, doubled for Arcana. And yeah, I rolled two. this. What's the math? Twenty-three. Okay. Twenty-three. Okay. Um, as you kind of solidify, you 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 kind of use a bit of projection here as well, uh, and your 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 magical knowledge to to not as much move your hand as move the space within the bag, and you pull out a button. I need my buns! And it looks old. Kind of moldy. Looks like it's been there for a long time. Is that the same bun? <laughs> uh, his hand There's off. nothing else in it. Um, the hand looks okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, it kind of sticks a little bit to the hand. Uh, yeah, it smells uh, badly. Gross. Kind of So dusts. yeah, you're getting me a new bag. Or, I, fine, I'll fix this one and keep it for myself. Clark sheets his Your sword. passive perception is high enough. As you notice, when he's kind of holding onto the bun and the bag is drooping, the bag's opening is getting larger. As if the opening itself is getting larger. Yeah, we might want to dispose of that. Where? And you look down and you can see that now, yes, almost as though, again, sort of the strange mirror trick, the, the bag is lengthening out. 
now it's about a foot and a half wide and still seems to be almost as though it's drooping down from where you're holding it. I think the magic's broken. Uh, it can be broken. Ah, yes, it can. You can feel now where your hand is holding onto the bag. Um. Your arm is kind of having to fight against being turned and twisted to turn into the bag. How big is this room? Uh, I think your guys were more or less in the opening area, so it's about 50 feet wide and about 15 feet deep. I'll throw the bag to the farthest corner. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Make a dexterity check. 19. Nice. Okay. Plus, Plus one. one. Okay. Uh, so you, <gasps> you heave the bag, and it spins and twists, and as it spins and twists, kind of like the same effect you have when someone is spinning pizza dough, and it sort of spins and twists and seems to get larger as it spins, and lands face down on the corner. I'm going to try the bag to dispel kind of, magic it again. Okay. You can see the bag kind of collapsing in on itself on the, as, as face down as the top part is kind of collapsing. Mentally, in. I'm like keeping notes on this process. <laughs> I got a 14 that time. 14? As you once again reach forward and, and force the, or con, uh, become a conduit for the will of Paluxia, unfortunately, this, this magic is too chaotic and you feel it kind of twist and turn under your, under your gaze, uh, but does not seem mm. to slow. The bag itself deflating slightly, but weirdly growing almost like a pool on the ground, and then sort of tipping slightly. And there's a sort of strange, juddering feeling, almost like a minor earthquake. So and based on uh, what happened the last time we had a bag of holding incident, can I tell what's going to happen? You can make an arcana check. Seven plus 14, so okay. 21. According to the theory about the way these are made. You haven't made them yourself, but you've read up on, on them. There's a couple of different theories of how they're made. Um, some say that it is the creation of a small pocket dimension, the enforcement of whoever has created this, literally breathes into existence a space. Others say that what it actually is is the connection to an existing space that is on the, the corner of some other plane. Um, curious enough, under that theory, the person went on at some length about saying about it might even be possible to find these spaces some other way uh, and potentially take things from bags. And they also go on to say that they've lost things from time to time and assume that they are there beside their socks and a few pieces of other clothing that have gone missing. Um, but the, the primary um, resource you kind of remember talks about how the universe uh, really abhors a vacuum. It also really does not wish anything to absolutely be created or destroyed. Things must shift around. Power must be fed. The amount of space that's inside one of these takes a tremendous amount of power. When it's inverted, usually what that means is simply that space seems to collapse and everything within it goes scattering. This is not acting like a normal inversion. This is looking as though whatever space was inside had more power after the, the bone was removed. Almost as if the bone itself had made a, a physical push inside on the good side as you're as you're processing this and i'm kind of imagining how how zacchaeus would be going through all of this going this is great this bag got bigger and if we do this again i can make the bag bigger yeah. but at the same time it has a physical limit and the edges of this must have broken following along the second theory what's likely happened is the space inside is now connected to a larger space which wants to exist here and as you're thinking through all of this, um, there's another shutter in the ground. And you can see the bag now has flattened out, mm -hmm. but it is not stopping as you normally think for the deflating bag when it hits the floor, but in fact seems to be moving further and further down. Uh, and there's an edge now, almost like flowing water, but pure darkness, pure blankness around the edge of the, of the bag. I run over and I'm gonna uh, try to pick it up. Okay. If there's a thing to pick up, the bag still seems to be there, and you grab onto the outside. It seems to be a bit resistant, almost like uh, it is a, kind of like the same effect you get if you try to pick up uh, uh, cellophane on a wet surface. Well, let's get that thing out of kind here. Kind of sticks. I'm well, casting. We have to touch it. Uh, it I'm casting. I'm casting dispel magic with a level seven slot. Okay. <laughs> um, so I. If it's like the counterspell rules, I should only have to roll if it's an eight or nine. Right. But yeah. So once again, this time concentrating 
the the experience you've had over the last while it's hard to say exactly how much but in the in the world you'd come from the last couple of weeks the miracle that was created reaffirmed and strengthened your knowledge of the power the Paluxia still has in the world. Diminished as it still seems to be, it is still an incredible amount of power. And in this instant, with that bone over there, supposedly a physical remnant of the goddess herself, you feel the strength of this flowing through you. And all of you see is as a whoosh of, of white light, almost like a, uh, a fog bank, move off of the bone and kind of encircle uh, Amrun and the bag for an instant and then it all seems to flow into and underneath the bag and with a bit of a jolt you step you, you lean backward and pull up now nothing more than a piece of cloth you can see however that where it had spread out on the floor that piece of the floor is missing uh, down to about a foot and that piece of the wall is also missing as wow. if it was consumed um that doesn't look good, says no. Mordo. No. Get that thing out of here. Yup. Uh, I'm running it up to the exit. Okay. I'm just yelling, everyone out of my way! Damn it. Okay. <laughs> you run towards the exit and? Yep. Uh, when I get to the edge of it, I'm going to carry it outside. Okay. Uh, There's a very startled Azkazix looking down at you. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I'm yelling. Uh, that's why I'm yelling out of the way so she doesn't get too surprised. Uh, and I'm going to toss it on the ground and then uh, repeatedly sacred flame it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> now that's not magical, I'm going to try to destroy it. Okay. Well, uh, as you, you move outside and throw down this piece of cloth and begin to utter, uh, you know, prayers to Paluxia uh, with <laughs> burn rather, with burn with fire. rather burn with fire. <laughs> a certain amount of urgency, uh, as Kazix uh, kind of pulls out her sword and steps back a few paces uh, and asks, what? 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 As the bag is getting torn by each of these strikes, the the uh, the bluish whitish energy kind of curving it up into smaller and smaller pieces of uh, of uh, fabric. You can now see a little bit of darkness on the inside, but diminishes quickly within the first few few strikes. Uh, bag malfunction. Uh, don't worry about it. It's dead now. Um, I'll write down all my notes and a piece of paper while. They're destroying the bag completely. <laughs> okay. I, I, I would have followed. <laughs> okay. Clark, yeah. stay at the threshold of the temple and just casually put his hand on the dead box on his belt. Okay. And watch this thing happen. Okay. Make a perception check. Sure. Whoops, they're over here now. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't look. <laughs> 25. 25? As you kind of put your hand on the dead box and, and step a couple of steps. I will remove the bag of holding from it my inventory. It feels lighter. And then you kind of shake it a little bit and it makes no noise. Hmm. The dead box is empty. Which you know you've added things to the dead box that yeah. have not disappeared. Yeah, yeah. But currently, it seems to be empty. Hmm. I walk back in. I think the problem is solved. Yes. Sorry. You hear from outside as because it's call. Maybe I'll get a you nice people big, are strange. Maybe I'll get, a, I'll get a nice big bonus when I get back to the library. Do you do you to pick up the piece of cloth or just leave it out mm -hmm. there? I'll pick it up. Okay. Maybe it, I can work it in something. It, else it's later. torn into small uh, oh. shreds and, and little bits Unless of pieces and it. strands. No, that's fine. Um, I'm I'll just wondering, like, I don't say this out loud, but could that effect be weaponized? <laughs> It's a research. Yeah. It's a research. Future I do, research. I do not put it in the bag of preservation just in case. <laughs> no <laughs> bags inside bags. All right. Number one rule of bags. Uh, Ordo is over kind of having ignored you run out and just looking at the, the floor and the wall. Hmm. That'll take a lot to fix. Sorry. Um, oh, that's okay. There's other ways. There's always other ways. I'll see if I can uh, like raise a five foot section of the floor back with a mold stone. Okay. Is, how is it that large an effect or it's a five foot cube that I can shoot. Okay. So make a sandwich check. Just kind of pull it up. Nineteen. Nineteen? 
Yeah, you managed to to raise a bit of the floor. You notice that there's a bit of a pattern that was on the wall and floor that are not continued in what you've created, but it is at least roughly even. You can actually still though make out the edge where the stone mm. before had been consumed. And Less the, of a danger. And the stone <laughs> beneath it is of a, of a of a deep gray, not the white of the walls or floor that is inside. Oh well, that makes it easier. Uh, yeah. A little bit less of a hazard. That, uh, uh, are you a cleric or another kind of? Uh, servant? Well, the term is a little bit strange, but I am a speaker. I do speak with and for Namazani. Uh, okay, but... if uh, if you have divine magic, then yes, perhaps I. Uh, I say it. The stone appears as though it can be molded properly. Yeah. I don't have quite the skill to uh, make it look as good. But... The stone of temples for Namazani is not so much molded as found. It just sort of appears. Oh, good. I'm sure in time the record will be corrected. That piece probably wasn't that interesting to remember anyway. Sorry, this kind of thing happens around us. Well, now it has this interesting story behind it. We were destined to change the shadow. You now have changed the shadow. Congratulations. <laughs> Let's all go home. Oh, I, I don't know if I'd say that. You guys have probably done more. I mean, whatever led to me being able to be here is what changed the shadow. We found Emerald's Tower. Right, Emerald, uh, Porto, uh, do you know if people can scry into the shadow or see what we're doing right now well I, people from other worlds i've never been able to see outside and while i do still hear the song it has a lot missing so i i think that we are on our own as they say well, i've right. been yeah. i wasn't able to scry and find you guys at all or send it to you what about more powerful spellcasters do you remember shortly before we disappeared, I was told by Emerald to have no further contact with you or Pelexia? Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, I just want to ensure I'm not being creeped on by Mr. Emerald, as I'm discussing near the end. Uh, yeah. I'd like to go help Pelexia. Yeah. I imagine he would have mentioned it to Mai Lee if he had seen you. Uh, I contacted her and she said that they hadn't, they didn't know where you were either, so uh, I assume that neither he nor Nala could have uh, gotten through, although maybe he could be keeping secrets. That's exactly what I'm worried about. And once we get back to Vatur, uh, I'd like to remain in contact with you, but not have him know. That seems like a you problem. It does. Clark, I, I do want to remain his apprentice. Gonna quietly Perhaps take out a stack of five mm -hmm. platinum pieces. Okay. And he's gonna pull out his box off his belt and very carefully go towards it. Okay. And put it back in his belt and wait. All right. It has no weight. The bo the box is empty once more. Mm. You okay. Yeah. Uh, we are on the right path. We just need to make the next couple of steps very carefully. Marius now can see or be in this place, whereas perhaps before he had troubles. Did that happen after the tree or before? <coughs> Probably because of the tree. Mm. That would make sense. Right? If if this if the barrier that close this place off is no longer as stable or has been broken through then I mean, if, if Namazni can reach through here and Marius can reach through here then perhaps all of them can I don't think there are barriers anymore uh, possibly yeah aside from a tall distance to climb yeah well I mean there's barriers that would prevent us from coming or going but we are but the immortals hmm I will need to meditate on this. I haven't had a chance to reach out to the song in a while. Maybe what you say is true, which would be great. I would hear so many more stories. I like the stories we have, but I know them all well. 
Um, if it's okay, then uh, while the rest of you continue eating or whatnot, uh, if I could look at those uh, murals. Of course. Uh, before we leave. I know the rest of you looked at them, but do you like to look again? Yeah, just in case there's something I missed the first time. Uh, I'll go with Emery. I'll follow as well. Bring a cake if you wish. <laughs> oh, yes, please. Is uh, Elzara meditating yeah, on her own? Or I'll, I'll join. Okay. I won't go through the full story yeah. as before, yeah. but it is uh, similar. And What? <laughs> yeah, you can kind really? Of, that... Jerk. We're going to take that episode and just edit your responses into it. Um, but yeah, it, it tells a story that that is more relevant to this place. There is some information about um, the world as it grows, but most of it seems to be capturing the legacy of this, of this place's mm -hmm. existence. Um, you do see, though, that Ordo has a strange look on his face as he looks down the hallway. Um, and in particular Elzera and Zacchaeus Elzera because you tend to notice things and Zacchaeus because you remember just about everything the strangeness is that the mural doesn't stop where it did before it seems to continue on and on and on and you can see Ordo tracing down that uh, and starting to, to look at the new paths the images aren't clear it is almost as though they are still being carved and as you watch, you can see some of the lines get a little darker, a little deeper. Uh, other lines are now almost like they're being washed away. Uh, and in general, it gives the appearance of, of a curving strangely in flux, as if it is changing at this moment, as if it is changing uh, in response to unseen hands. And that's only the future ones, right? It seems to be, yeah. Um, but as you kind of glance back, you'll notice that the older ones are getting dimmer, and there are blank spaces. Uh, on the wall now, where there once had been more story. Interesting. I'll point that out. Yeah. Uh, Ordo is kind of running up ahead and like humming and hawing and squealing in delight of the new things being added. Like but when you mention what's missing, he said, ah, "Well, I knew some stories were going to go away." So like whatever you guys did, it's uh, it's making some big changes. That's what we're here for. Let's hope they're positive changes. Change is change. And as we record it, we try not to think about positives and negatives, more uh, just trying to be accurate. I'm still learning. It's been a long time since I've had a teacher. But I can feel, I can feel them here. Kind of wistfully stops talking. Mm. So... So this means that Pachero is not a bad guy. He's a depressed ex-boyfriend. Clark says, "Let me show you something." To put it in certain way, yes. And he points it to a particular part of the wall, mm. where uh, Pachero is seen guiding orcs to the world. Hmm. Before most others. Yeah. Um, he says, "That can't be evil. I wouldn't be here otherwise." Hmm. I mean. There doesn't seem to be anything evil here, per se, at least not until he became depressed. Yeah. Uh, my own memory is vague. We didn't see what happened with Paluxia in particular. You've had from this side differing accounts of what happened. Um, I believe in this one. Um, is anybody else going to be able to remember it better than I? Because that was a while ago now. Yeah, because I uh, think and the, she. I think she had gone through with Ignis, and then we saw Petro watching, sad, and then there were holes with her bones in them, and he was trying to make more of her or something. So. The, the version of mythology that's here, um, which Ordo would attest is accurate, if still limited because there's more to be known, um, would be depicting a violent separation, essentially, mm. uh, in that uh, the, there was an interjection between Paturo and Paluxia. 
mm. and that uh, the later history of that, the later part, would depict that um, the bones were thrown into this realm. Okay. So she was killed, so to speak, in our world, and then the bones came here. That would be the interpretation, yeah. Hmm. Again, it's all pictorial, and yeah. Ordo tries to expand where he can, but he does say that he does not know all the details. And I think perhaps we need to speak to Pachiro. Mm -hmm. uh, I would hope that maybe we don't have to bargain away the bone of my goddess to leave, but if that is necessary, then I understand. What if he could restore her? I don't think he could, but I think I know someone who might be able to. It right. sounds like Petra would certainly be interested in helping. Mm -hmm. So it looks like there, were, there was Petra, Ignis, and Paluxia, and then Mar uh, Marius and the others were basically children of theirs. Of Marius the and Marina are depicted as twins yeah. um, coming about at the same time. Um, Tandu is not not visible in that particular mural, uh, nor is uh, Follow Lily. Um, okay. If you can ask Ordo about them if yeah. you wish. But it looks like the structure is the first three, then Marius and Marina, or? Uh, essentially, yes. It's never okay. put together in that yeah. way, but you can interpret it that it seems to be something like that. Yeah, like, Mar that. well, because I seem to remember the, the, the other figures were smaller mm -hmm. for the ones one of the other appeared after. One of the other... to be, from what I remember, described as the children of Yeah, yeah. okay. Ignis and in in, so in common that. parlance, um, the, the way the structure goes is Ignis and Paluxia, well, Ignis is the parent, uh, and come to discover that Paluxy was essentially erased from that history. Uh, Marius and Marina are the twin children. Mm. Uh, and the, the uh, Tandu you don't know much about. You haven't talked to the yeah. dwarves who typically are the Tandu worshippers. And, and uh, Fala Lily uh, you've only seen in passing and, and would be some a verse in a song somewhere where mm. but you've come to understand that, the, that maybe having some sort of goddess status. Yeah. Um, one of the other things that's depicted in this uh, probably fairly early on is that there's an opening between what the depiction of mm. seems like the shadow and, or seems like, sorry, not the shadow, but seems like another place yeah. and Omesha and uh, the shepherd of that portal is Paluxia. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because that was, in the other stuff we heard, that was where the other beings that were evil and whatnot came from. Yeah. But that was the um, Ignis version. <laughs> yeah. Well, um kind of implies Ignis is the bad guy, which could be a problem. Uh, the Ignians are not happy that I've put a church in Vator, uh, because most, most of us aren't allowed, or don't get to put a church there. Namazni is very subtle, and I mean, we all n know that that restaurant is a seems to be a temple of Marius, but no one will ever admit it. Uh, uh, hmm. I forget the name of the restaurant. Marius's blessing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know. I forget that. Excellent food. Um, <laughs> mariachi band. It was uh, quite memorable. Yeah, yeah. I it wasn't that. mariachi. <laughs> it was dwarven mariachis. <laughs> <laughs> the ones that we hired. Well, remember, were dwarven mariachis. remember that that the one who was who, yeah, the ones that you guys hired were a bit more. Um, yeah. um, how do I want to put it? Uh, Flamboyant. Yeah, that's sure. The ones I was but remember, Flint to. was actually the one working yeah. on the main the main uh, floor in that. Yeah. One. The ones that um, we hired yeah. were extra. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, By every definition of the word. <laughs> they. The Ignians are, are, I guess they were protesting. They're not being allowed to have an Ignean church in Vator if I'm allowed to put a Polexian one in. So there may be issues if we try to go back and say that, hey, your god is evil. Um, and you do remember uh, the flame keepers that, mm -hmm. you, that you worked with uh, while some of their practices seemed scary, 
Um, Barbaric. You, maybe so. Uh, but there was, from the Flame Keeper at least, a very genuine mm-hmm. uh, heart. Oh, yeah. He, he, he likes a few of them. Uh, but he's, he's, I know that, I mean, we had pleasant dealings with, uh, with uh, Zora Terrell and with Fel- Is it Felicia. Uh, there's another one though. It's just when we were clearing Ophelia. up the bridge. Uh, no, um, I keep thinking Felicia. But I read wrong. I, I, I'm impressed the, you pulled out Zora Terrell's names actually, mm-hmm. actually as well. But uh, hey, I like Zora Terrell. Uh, no, there was the there was the young one that had just been assigned to the mm-hmm. to Rackdale when we went to yep. go south. Anyways, he's a the Ignians themselves do not seem to be evil, but I know that according to Zora, she was assigned to keep an eye on me in case they needed to destroy me. So the Ignean, the Ignians may be fine, but the Ignean church may not be very happy with what we've learned. They don't have um, to know yet. Yeah, I mean, we, we might just not want to go telling people right now. but If we do the thing we are destined to do here, uh, it may not matter what mm. they think. Yeah, that is mm. a good point. Well, speaking of which, should we go meet Askazix? Yeah, sure. I have intentions, whether you agree with them or not, I'm sorry, mm. to deliver that uh, relic to Marius. I believe he's our best bet. Hmm. I think he would be the one to sway Petro out of his funk. Possibly, but Marius is also a trickster who takes as much as he gives from my little, my small amount of what I've seen. Do you think... I intend to give back. I believe I owe a debt to him. Okay. For what? May I ask? My existence. He's my reason for being. Wasn't that Petero? He's my people's uh, reason for being. Okay. And I'm not exactly sure this is right. He points to the to the wall. Yeah, there. I don't think Petero did that just because. I think he was influenced. It's it's right. It just may not be complete. Yeah. But we don't allow it to be wrong. Um, well, I don't think sure. I, mean, I don't I, think we're going to change Baturo, which I think is what we're here to do. This name is not in my current book. But I think Marius can. <laughs> but that is how do we possibly? <laughs> How reassured that Marius doesn't trick us and take the pillar and leave? Faith. Then it tricks your god. Clark will tap his belt. They're not all that bad. Mm. He's pointing to that box you've yeah. seen him carry. I oh, think you've uh, you explained the debt box before. Yeah, and, and as he does that, he thinks and, and then puts 70 platinum into the box Okay. over a minute or so. In in the small space of time and physical space, uh, yeah, kind of like the the bag of holding, it it absorbs all of that. And where are these going? Back to a queen. Just after you've put that in, you do feel a slight shift in the box. We'll check that later. Felicia Oswood. Yeah, I have it in front of me. I was just waiting to see if she was going to get it. Mm-hmm. But you had Felicia, which was amazing. I'm, I'm very... There's a part of me which is just like, oh, remembering the names. But I don't remember. The uh, the beginning of this book is literally the decision of which caravan we were going to go for, <laughs> uh, which meant that it was like right before I started this book. Well, well no, Fel- actually. Felicia was after. Felicia was after. Felicia was during the winter. Yeah. Because she oh, was helping so to was, clear the bridge. I was right at first. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Then uh, where I was looking. Yeah, for, for those of you watching at home, uh, there's a little bit of history in this game, and uh, someday maybe we'll be able to fill all the people in. 
I want to say hello to uh, Flebel Florf, who's watching right now. Hello, person watching. Hey. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, the. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. There was a, the debate going on there too, but yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I was determined to find it. Paturo well, is stuck here. Yeah. In a rut. Um, Marius can if, move freely. If I mean, if Marius could help convince him, then sure. Uh, Would Marius want to convince him, though? Yeah. I think he would. This place needs change. We are to be the agents of change. And I've spoken to the god of change. And what do we tell Askazix if we choose to go this route? She's got a job to deliver the thing. We'll deal with that when we get there. I'm not convinced, but... At some point no in here... Ordo has delivered some tea, some refreshing tea. It's the, as you recall, it's one of the few things that actually is grown here, and the tea was made from Bernard's own stash. I don't suppose we can take a night's rest before we leave. You can rest, I'm sure, but counting time's going to be tricky here. Hmm. That's because uh, I did say time was of the essence. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Eskizix is working for Paturo, though. Could we contact Marius and ask him to meet us there? I don't know if I can do that. Hmm. Hmm. Well, maybe we should head to Paturo, and then if Marius shows up... We I imagine, I imagine he will. Yeah. If good. it's important enough, he will. Okay. Well, I wish I had the time to... Uh, Change some of my spells around, but uh, oh, I wish I just I had agree. time to have spells again. <laughs> yeah, most of mine are gone now. I've been plowing through them. Um, okay, well, I mean, the, your schedule is your own. You know what Askazix mm -hmm. had said. Uh, well, I will. I mean, if uh, we're gonna go on a journey, mm -hmm. a little bit of rest would probably be worthwhile. Because I have one level one, one level two, one level three, both my level fives and a level seven. Yeah, I'm, I'm more or less the same. Yeah, I mean, I would be, I, I would prefer to, but, uh, I mean, you three have been here longer than I have. If you think we need to head out right away, then we should, but if we don't have to, then uh, I would prefer to get uh, some rest and... I mean, today we've back. so far fought five dragons, grown a tree. You've had a busy day. Mm -hmm. Busy day. Um, Shot down some invisible bastard. Um, I'll take watch. Uh, I'll go. What? Do we want to do the same thing we used to do? Yeah, sure. Which for me was two weeks ago. <laughs> Wow. Um, well, ten years and two weeks ago. It's weird. I feel older. About this time, the entire building shakes rhythmically. Uh, it gets stronger and stronger and louder outside. I'll go meet up with Ask Six. Okay. This is not right. Uh, <laughs> you horrible. turn around the corner and... How do I get out of here again? Uh, Ordo comes up to your your uh, elbow. Uh, follow me. I'm following. What's this uh, shaking? Does this, does this shaking happen often? The no, <laughs> never before. But that's what Ooh. this day is like, I guess. I'll follow. Okay. Is, are you staying there? Yeah, no. Okay. I'm go with. Um, as you all trail behind Ordo, who takes a remarkably short period of time to get back to the front, and look out, and there's a hill in front of the building now. Like about. 15 feet away from the building as you look out and nope it's not a hill and you look upward and standing there about uh, the 40 golden. feet tall uh, you recognize from from Withergate one of the one of the massive behemoths that was summoned to uh, deal with the Bulgura that was there right uh, and sure it's it's standing there uh, and uh, seems to be kind of looking down at 
uh, Azkazix, who kind of floats up towards its face and starts to talk to it. Uh, you see, uh, as you kind of watch her uh, fly up to it, that it looks like it has some sort of stone outcroppings that are on the, on, on the chest and on the back. Uh, platform is about mid chest level uh, on it as well. And Those were in the, service to Patero. And you do see and they are a, slight, by a slight uh, glow of white from its back yeah. where you saw a pillar in it before. You didn't tell me they made golems out of these. Well, we didn't have the chance. Oh. Yes, they, they make yeah. golems out of these. Me. If you wish another one, there it sits. Uh, ask his eggs. I walk out. Neat. Ask his eggs kind of stops the talking and looks back down, floats back down to the door. I, Are you ready to go? Uh, yes, ish, uh, guys. Uh, do we have time to rest? You wish to rest? A little more, yes. They've had a very long day of dragon fighting. Uh, what you said earlier, time was of the essence. What's happening, and can we spare? It cannot tell me much. Its words are limited, but it tells me that it waded through many to get here. I don't imagine that's going to change all that much. It's what, not for the worst. What we had seen was the moving of armies, uh, moving across, out of, strangely, out of Hardgloom. Where are they going? They march towards the Ever, the Ever Skull, or Ember Skull. They're going to attack Pajuru, or at least confront him. But he is too powerful for them, and will withstand him forever. Make an insight check. Sixteen plus eight, uh, so twenty-one. Fifteen. She is absolutely confident, but not entirely sure she's right. But if you must rest, I will not have you die while you are with me. But uh, if it's armies, then yes, we should rest. We we did just fight. What, what was her name? The hmm? the dragon. Gavinetta. Oh, Dra Gavinetta. Gavinetta. Yeah. Would we have time to rest at Pashuro's temple? I do not know what waits you there. I think we will need to rest before we leave if there are armies in the way. Are are, are we safe here for the next? Seven hours. Oh, how do I get Stretch of time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we will stand watch. It is not one made for fighting, but it can. Cake? She looks at you strangely. It's chocolate. It has a taste. <laughs> she reaches out to... to uh, are you inside the thing still? <laughs> no, he, he, was, he went at out. least to the edge, probably slightly out. Yeah. Uh, she reaches forward with a... a, a what you see now notices a taloned hand uh, and kind of picks it up, smells it, chews a bit of it, spits it out. I do not like this. It throws it to the ground. Okay, not everyone likes chocolate. Um, and the part of you also thinks that was created with the pure spirit of Paluxia. Mm. Um... I'll try a piece of the cake in case it's gone bad. It tastes glorious. Okay. <laughs> no, this is great. Mm, ground cake. Uh, it it yeah. even rivals some of the things you had Floor tasted cake. at uh, at. Uh, I think, yeah, you no, you didn't go to Mary's. It wasn't. You never actually ate there, did you? I don't uh, think so. Yeah. No, that was just. No, right. we just lied. Right. No. <clears throat> Um, it rivals the rumors of what you've, you've yeah. had at Mark's blessing. I could be well, able to tell because I've worked with the people who cooked there. That's true. You worked at the soup mm -hmm. kitchen, essentially. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I say we'll be out as soon as we can. Very well. We will stand watch. <gasps> Thank you. You have the bag of stuff. Mm -hmm. That means you have the bowls for the heroes' feast. I don't think. Did we get any of those? Because those are a thousand gold piece. I thought we did. No, I got like I I got like a thousand in stuff for your reincarnation spell. I thought you grabbed a couple. I don't think so. I didn't. Ever I don't, I don't know. You, I mean, you if you can... have the sheets on which this is written, yeah, I like I that's the better way to do it. I didn't have it any, on any of the earlier stuff. I guess we've got a bunch of diamonds. Uh, we've got teleport chalk. We've got a thousand gold for the reincarnation spell, uh, and we have a bunch of potions. Okay. Um, for some reason, I thought you had picked some. No, I don't. I don't know if I had that one at the time. Maybe I did, but. Uh, yeah, I mean that's I remember that, you that's going something to buy a bunch of stuff. Uh, yeah, that's some 
that's I think what we have to start buying up next. <laughs> Uh, although uh, I crossed off a thousand gold off of my sheet just for the church support for the time. Okay. Well, um, you've made your your uh, your declarations to Azkazix, and Azkazix uh, proceeds to continue to patrol as she kind of had been doing before, uh, occasionally conversing uh, with the the gigantic uh, stone creature, although. It, it doesn't seem like it says all that much, and you get the impression that she's only speaking uh, kind of half of what she's thinking to it. Um, and then you also will feel the occasional uh, rumble as it moves outside to readjust its position, uh, more or less kind of standing right in front of the door. Uh, and doesn't adjust too much once it kind of gets into final position. Ordo welcomes you in and offers you rooms if you wish, uh, or to stay in the common room. Sure. Room. Um, and uh, yeah, you you have a common room to yourselves. The simple unadorned rooms that are always common in these temples, uh, squarish but not sharp corners, all made of the same white stone. It's peaceful, and the glow that the walls give off is easy enough to see by. No shadows are ever seen here. Deeper in the temple, you do hear the distant sound of strings playing. And then Ordo's voice starts up as he begins to sing into the evening. It's, it's a strange old song, uh, a tale of, of heroes that you've never heard of before, uh, stepping forward to, uh, to rescue a village from the plight of a dragon, or another tale telling something about uh, the discovery of hidden knowledge, uh, long thought lost. Do you just mm -hmm. go to what, rest? What kind of hidden you... knowledge? Anything you recognize? Or... Uh, make a history check. 16 plus... 8 comes before... Uh, yes, so 26. 26. Uh, you remember reading a book on farming a long time ago? Mm -hmm. And weirdly enough it sort of clicks in your mind that that farming book was exactly the knowledge that they were they had lost that it seemed as though people had forgotten how to raise certain crops that didn't exist for years and yet they were suddenly discovered again okay do you all just take a rest decide to sit back sure yeah i'm thinking about the day's happenings and about the ring and about Clark will take a moment to check his dead box at some point when he's alone and okay. quiet. We'll deal with this first uh, sure. as you as you kind of sit and think about it. Still feeling that twin pull, one towards where Bernard Cotton in the small grove that he's maintained here is, and another in the direction stronger of the, the massive tree, uh, which in your mind is indistinguishable from uh, Riarden. And along that connection you feel a warm embrace. It feels almost like leaning back against a familiar tree that's been warmed by the sun all day, and the branch is strong and sturdy and supportive. And that's sort of where you drift off into your, your meditation. Not words, just feelings. You open the debt box, yeah. and there's a small note. Let's have a read. What's the gist? Uh, it is essentially um, your contribution has been noted good to hear from you again I may have work for you Zed I'll pocket that note okay um, what about the two of you I was just going to sleep okay. I was listening to an order of songs but that was pretty much it yeah. and you're kind of setting yourself up for your meditation. No, um, I, don't, I don't. Half elf. Don't oh, you're right. Half elf. You actually have to sleep. All right. Did my ears get any bigger, by the way? Mm -hmm. Did your ears get any bigger? Yeah, because like one time, like several episodes you, ago, you, it's you, like, you, you feel like your ears are a little bit longer after we've been in the shadow? <laughs> uh, not noticeably, but it's hard to tell because there's no mirror. Yeah. Minor conjuration. Mirror. As you look, uh, yeah, actually, if you were to say anything, it's almost as though the, the dormant Elven features mm -hmm. are starting to become stronger. Okay. Uh, there's a certain certain way that the brow looks, 
and the 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 head uh, kind of is curved a bit more, and the ears are a little bit more prominent. Um, it is also strange because you are not physically the same size you were when you started either. You've gone through a number of changes that have messed with the shape, and you're not yeah. sure if it's just that or something else. Okay. I'll make a note of that, yeah. and then go to sleep. Okay. And think of like possible theories as to why it could happen, but I'm pretty sure I'm just going to I, I kind of get this impression that when Zacchaeus goes to sleep, like most of us are dreaming of, you know, sheep jumping over fences or, you know, successful uh, hunts that you've gone on or the beauty of the forest. And there's just equations and, <laughs> theories. and, and theories and maps and, jumping you know. Jumping over fences. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you weaponize pocket dimensions. Hunt, hunting, hunting down the, the rogue theory and uh, and walking through these trees that are giving off magical effects. When I wake up, though, do I have any like breakthrough, like eureka moments of theories how I could like weaponize about? Oh, you thing? think you're gonna wake up? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and Amrun, his first night in this strange um, place. Well, we used to trade off. So if it was four hours, four hours. Yeah. So are you meditating first? It looks as though she's, she's kind of drifted into something and a smile has okay. crossed across her face. So. Then I'll basically be awake for the first four hours and then okay. meditate afterwards. Um, Ordo plays for a couple of hours. It's, it's just on the edge of hearing and maybe echoing around the walls. It's hard to tell. He switches languages uh, with every other song. Uh, you hear a little bit in familiar languages, some which are strange and guttural and, and gruff, which you don't recognize at all. Uh, and some which feel like uh, common, but the, the, the phrases and the cadence is all strange, as if it's archaic. But otherwise, uh, where did the uh, pillar end up, by the way? Still outside, or still at the front, I guess? Uh, we probably would have moved it. We, we brought it inside, but yeah. we didn't bring it far. You didn't move it because it was really heavy. heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, we're probably, <clears throat> we probably would have been resting in the room with it. Okay, so you, you, was, you, yeah. you, between the, the few of you, it's not too yeah. hard to maneuver it. It just is basically three or four of you having to, to yeah. heave this thing. For you, it doesn't feel like it has as much weight, but it still takes as much effort. Hmm. In other words, while you, you grab onto it and you're heaving it, there's no pain. There's no, yeah. there's no pressure on the fingers. It just feels as though you have to take that effort. And every moment in contact with, you, with this feels like, like after a long, hard... A sweaty day, leaning back into a beautiful waterfall that refreshes you constantly. Mm. Uh, it feels almost as though you can hear her voice. Sometimes, maybe in in a, a counter melody to what Ordo is playing, or maybe that's just all that's been happening recently with her. Um, you can feel your own body, though. Um, resisting change in being here almost as though the world itself this place is trying to invade and there's an an, uh, uh, a, an enveloping feeling around you of that protective barrier which seems to be holding much of it at bay I don't like this place um, yeah he'll just keep basically keep on watch I mean if Clark's there for the, the first few hours too then yeah. we'll probably chat some um, what do you chat about? You don't have to do it in real time, but what would be the topics between Clark, Clark and Amrun? Uh, just basically the nature of the place and that it's broken. And so kind of filling them in on some of the experiences you've had so far. destined to fix it. Um, and Paturo's the key linchpin to the whole mm. thing, we think. Why do you feel that you, you owe that scar for something? I, I earned it. He gave it to me. Marius? Yeah. Interesting. That's why I shouldn't have is it removed. It, is it painful? Yes. Interesting. I think it's a reminder. Hmm. This place dulls the senses. It might keep me sharp. I can feel it trying to invade me. This is a mill. It's a strange feeling. It, it grinds souls. My impression yeah. is that it hones them to uh, to a point where they can go where they're supposed to go. We're here yeah, I could 
we're here not because of that. No, we we're suffer road its outsiders. effects. We yeah. suffer its effects. Well, it's an interesting place. I hope we leave soon and never have to come back. I, we can agree on that. Mm. Uh, other than that, yeah, uh, Emma would just chit chat about what's happened recently. Well, I'll bring up to to snuff with the the history of this place as we know it, as far as like what we've done and who've we seen and mm-hmm. what the society is like. Okay. Stupid forests. Mm. <laughs> this place does sound pretty horrible. Yeah, it's hell. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, basically, would just be that. Okay. And yeah, you you take in some of this knowledge, and and it numerous times Clark has described it as broken, and you can see where, especially if you learned a little bit more, and even some of the proclamations that Askezix has made about Petura's role. Mm. Uh, he had been called the grinder of souls. He'd been called the the uh, transformer of of, uh, of uh, not the transformer of debt, but the transformer of of uh, of unfinished business, essentially. Um, but the evidence you've seen, you know, from Withergate, for example, where there's this endless churn of never changing, and there's only moments that of change introduced by things like the discovery of those bones, which happens mm-hmm. once every what generation, according to where they've felt about it. Um, you probably mentioned the umbral nest, but you don't know much about it. This strange glowing um, vortex at the far end of, of this place. Oh, and the Denver skull. I mentioned that too. Mm. The one fixed point in all mm. of this. Yeah. The I place think, we're going. We, we think that's Paturo or an aspect of him. Okay. I'm not a wizard though. Mm. Me neither. Something that I would have talked about when we were heading to sleep is do we want to win walk tomorrow? I think however we go, we have to bring the pillar with us, Fair. which might limit things. I mean, there's that big golemy thing out front that could probably carry it, but we'll probably have to stick around it anyways. Okay. Um, Just while, while people yeah. are talking in the overnight, yep. the spells. Because uh, if we're not going to use it, I'll plant something else. Mm. Um, once Clark heads off to sleep, uh, Amron will probably hum along with some of the songs. Okay. Um, uh, mostly just keeping an eye on the place. He's not going to go outside the room because that uh, getting lost happens when you wander around a, it's true. one of these temples. Some of the songs strike you as very familiar, and then you realize they're songs that your parents have played numerous times, but not for mm. decades. Yeah. Um, it was our farm aid concert that they uh, <laughs> probably um, uh, and children's songs as well. Some of which now take on a different context. Uh, songs of uh, the Water Woman that now you look back on and go, that it was about Paluxia mm. and other little songs and little references like that. Which, while the name had been erased, the impact still remained. Okay, I'll. I will go to the door at one point and just sort of uh, call out to Ordo a bit. Not terribly loud, but... Uh, mm-hmm. The uh, strings abate, and uh, shortly after you hear the footsteps coming around the corner, Ordo there, smiling, still carrying the loot. It's about as big as he is. Uh, you like stories. I, there's, I have some with me you might be interested in. You do? Ah, yes. I don't know of their truth. I think someone was killed to keep them quiet. Oh, uh, but uh, I uh, like basically if he if he wants to spend the time reading them, uh, then uh, I've got the two play transcripts. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, from a while back, uh, so I haven't. I mean, I've looked at them a bit. They're not about Paluxia, but they seem to be about Paluxia, mm-hmm. um, as many plays are. They are not about what they appear to be about. Um, I would love to see them. Yeah, and I'll, I basically, uh, yeah, he can read them right there. Yeah. Uh, he sits Adam. down and starts to, to read through them. Um, he starts doing the voices. <laughs> no, but there are several points where he kind of 
can't help himself and laughs pretty loudly mm. uh, and then kind of stifles a laugh and looks around and hasn't disturbed anybody other than the people that are awake uh, seeing uh, Ordo kind of peering over these uh, and then every once in a while there's also like well that's not true uh, as he sort of flips through them for the evening mm. and then uh, whenever it's time for uh, Elzera to uh, finish meditating or for me to start um Everyone else is still asleep, except possibly for Ordo over in the corner. But uh, Ordo doesn't seem to sleep. Yeah. Um, once Elzara comes out of her meditations, anyways, uh, Amrun will walk over and quietly say, uh, "Is it Riarden?" Yes. In the tree. Interesting. Yeah. It's weird, but a good weird. I'm going to give her a hug. I will take the hug. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's it's kind of been a little isolating for a while. And someone who you've known for most of your life. I mean, I've known him for all of his life. That's true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, and then basically, yeah, he'll uh, back off and say, uh, yeah, interesting. And then he'll he'll do his meditations with his back, uh, basically sitting next to the pillar with his back against it. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, you feel that sort of same supportive mm. uh, presence that's there, um, and and and. Almost a voice, like wordless syllables, almost. Mm. But you're distinctly hearing them now. And now that Order has stopped his singing and playing, it's still there. It's still there, just out of reach. And I will meditate. You meditate, um, Elzara. You see Ordo on the other side of the room, perched and just kind of reading through these sheets of paper, and he stops flips them all over again, starts reading through them again, and then, oh, every once in a while. Uh, but otherwise, it doesn't seem to be doing all that much. Do you do anything special during your final watch? Not particularly. Um, I do remember you saying that my ring was attunement. Mm-hmm. So I have disattuned from the doll. And... Okay. And fully embraced the ring? Yeah. Um, It, what now? Sorry? She can't embrace the ring, but it can embrace her. Oh, well, okay. It, it, there's a spiritual embrace here. Sure. Let's not be limited to three dimensions. Mm-hmm. Um, once that point happens, and it seems to take longer, this place is almost timeless, and it's difficult yeah. to even measure that, but... you hear his voice I've missed you I've missed you too I'm always going to be with you You even if even if I'm not actually there I can I can see so many places it's beautiful I want to show you someday if I can to see it. Look for me. Not just here. I can feel all those other places. Seek me out, and you'll find me. And there's not really any more spoken word than that, but you can feel this flood of emotion. Um, that is it initially a flood but then sort of calms down to to a sense of presence and you can't see him you can't even really hear him at the moment but you know he's there and will always be there literally in the palm of your hand the night passes or what passes for night in this strange realm of shadow Full rest. You seem rested. Sweet. 
mm. Flarg and Zakis being the last to finally rise. Zakis fading, fleeting dreams of strange new formulae. And you reach over to your books and start to write them down and scribble them. It doesn't look quite right, but you think you're onto something. Mm -hmm. Although, if it's going to take another destruction of a bag to do it, that's going to be pretty expensive. Yeah. Ordo is asleep. You don't actually know when he fell asleep. You kind of are a little wrapped up in yourself as well. But he's sort of there, sitting there with the, the, the play still spread open, uh, snoring ever so slightly. Um, Ron Stamel kind of doing that strange jerky thing that you get when you're sleeping, sitting up, mm -hmm. and you your whole body kind of knows that you shouldn't be falling over. Every once in a while that leads to a little twang as the, the loot beside him, the string gets, gets hit. But eventually, not long after the two of you rise as well, he kind of looks up. Hello. Hello. Ah, those are some really weird stories. Yeah. The author's not that good, but it was kind of funny at times. There's a lot wrong about it, but there's also a lot right about it. Uh, not necessarily in what it says, but more in how it feels. Mm, that was the feeling I got. Yeah. Well, thank you. And he hands them oh. back to you. No problem. I don't think I'll be carving them into the record, but they'll no. be in my mind for a long time. Hey, everyone, uh, do you have any eggs and bacon for us? Toast? You know, I don't feel hungry. Do I feel hungry? Should I feel, should I not feel hungry? There's no feasting here. Wow, does this place suck. There's no physical um, need of hunger, but... I mean, the memory but, does call to you, and that recent experience, that, that well, small amount of joy. Yeah. Not, Bacon. Actually, I'm gonna try something. Uh, I just can't remember what level the spell is. I think it's three or four. Three. Um, I will create uh, food and drink. Okay. There will be uh, bacon and eggs and a salad. Uh, and some ham. <laughs> oh, Zara um, isn't a vegetarian. I might be, but well, Zara isn't. Well, there's a salad as well. some ham in there. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's not going to eat the salad. Ham appears on top of it. Um, it can be a ham salad or something. Just <laughs> um, bacon, bacon salad. Uh, and <laughs> to drink that coffee stuff that we had up on the island that we can't normally get, <laughs> but magic might make it right now. Was that did uh, was, uh, was Anya that had that yep. or yeah black moss tea yep black moss tea <laughs> yes yeah oh yeah that's right uh, yeah and as as before it comes not as the dull substance that's just for sustenance but in this fact is why I'm trying it the the full <laughs> the full wealth of a breakfast there's fresh fruit that smells as though it has been just picked uh, there is a, a, a piping hot. Uh, 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 pot of black moss tea which Ordo is fascinated by. Uh, the tea that he has is flavorful but not mm. really all that exciting. It has a little berry flavor to it uh, and he takes a, a sip of this actually looks over if he has permission to Oh yeah, it is uh, a dream too. And then takes a sip of this and it's just there's a sudden, again, eyes widen wahoo! And just drinks he starts drinking more and more cups of it. I can't it. make this normally wonderful. but it seems that uh as long as that's around, it's a little overcharged. So, uh, enjoy. The memory of this will sustain me for a long time. Uh, all praise to you, but wow. It normally only lasts a day. I don't know what will happen here, but... Here you go. <laughs> if you ever escape this place, you can find the Black Moss Tea on the island of Ikro. Uh, he, he pauses half, half a drink, and there's a sort of puzzled look across his face. I'm I'm never leaving here. Uh, this is the place that Namazani needs me. Well, if she ever transfer, transfers your position, then who knows? <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Uh, and this pauses for a moment and then bites into an orange, uh, not even bothering to peel it, actually, mm -hmm. at this point. And you have a very delightful breakfast. It is filling and warming and 
the smell of it alone is a touch of normalcy. Uh, two meals in two days after weeks Hundreds so of years. far. Mm -hmm. Who knows how long it's been uh, since you actually thousands of happened. years. <laughs> the um, meal is quickly consumed, however, though right. never diminished. Mm -hmm. Same size it was when you started. Never ending, it seems. And then. What? Well, you pack up my stuff. Yeah, pack up and go. All right, drag that up to the or top. Ordo, farewell. I I bid you well travels, and I'm sure, whatever happens, I'll hear your stories. And then, Nod. probably, I think you two are the strongest, actually. <laughs> uh, um, no, just him. Just him. We all have oh, tens. Okay. Well then, probably you bearing the, the brunt burden of the of the Clark pillar itself. Clark could carry one end relatively yeah. comfortably. Yeah, and then two of us. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. He wasn't doing anything else. Probably having to switch off one of the two at the end every couple of uh, you know turn or so. I would imagine the bird person would be perfect to help. The bird. <laughs> well, you do remember that she picked it up with one hand before. Yeah. Well. Um, Clark's not letting it go this time. Yeah. He'll help. Uh, but as you as you come to emerge, it it appears. Strangely, especially to Amrun, as if nothing has changed outside. There's no change in the light, mm -hmm. change in the temperature, there's no change in the wind, and in fact, no change in the massive statue that stands before you and the uh, the winged woman uh, who was on patrol. Um, she stretches a little bit, the only indication that she's been busy for any period of time, uh, and then turns a little bit, uh, having noticed it before, uh, from both uh, Zakis and Elzera, there's a little strain in her face, um, impatience probably, uh, but it's it's very much masked by um, sort of a, a, a maybe rigid training or years of of suppression maybe of her emotions. You're not exactly sure, um, but she sees you come out uh, and. Uh, uh, Much shouts a single word up to the strange creature. You know Infernal, right? Yeah. Does anybody else know Infernal? No. Uh, it's a simple command, uh, kneel. And the the massive uh, statue kneels down and bends down such that the the statues, uh, the, the platforms built on, essentially built into it, and you can see now that they're essentially emerging from it, nice. uh, are only about uh, three feet off the ground uh, on the front, and the other one's a little higher because it's leaning forward. Um, Will the golem take us all the way to Petros? That is the plan. Excellent. This should be fun. Uh, mm. uh, um, it can carry this, I assume. It will have no trouble carrying all of you. Excellent. And the pillar? Of uh, course. I see there's one at its back. but That one will not be leaving. No, no worries. Please, climb on board. <laughs> she kind of helps some of you get on board. Um, she shouts another word, uh, gather to the creature uh, and it reaches down and with two fingers essentially picks up the, the pillar just sort of tucks it kind of like a, a, a pen a pen being into the pocket kind of thing <laughs> uh, just sort of sets it down does it have a pillar protector uh, it does not have a pillar protector <laughs> um, but it kind of leans it uh, against itself uh, and so there's space enough for two of you in the front and space for enough for two of you in the back Who's going where? I'll sit in the front because if I fall, I can help myself. <laughs> okay, okay. Who else is in the front? <laughs> I'll go in the more in the most secure spot. I mean, what's most secure to Zakis? Neither of them seem to be any different. Okay. Just oh. one is front front facing, the other is backward facing. I'll go in the front. Okay, I'll go in the back then. Okay, so we have uh, Amrun. And Elzera in the front, and Zakis, and I guess by process of elimination, uh, Clark in the yep. back. Is Radix gone? No, Radix is gone. Radix is not here. You have yep. not seen her actually since the battle. I presume that you would have filled uh, them in that you told her to return back to take care of she Bernard and her sisters. Kind of, kind of beat up, so I kind yeah. of. Understand. Yeah. You'd fall. seen her fall once during the fight with the dragons as well, so. Yeah. Um, um, so the ring, it's just a connection. Thing, nothing else. Uh, for now. For now. For now. Um, you get the sense uh, that that tugging sense of where the two elements are now is almost as clear as if you could see them. Uh, um, 
there will be another handout later. Okay. I, I, don't, cool. I, I forgot to put that one together today. Cool. Um, actually, I know one effect, which is plus one AC. Cool. Uh, I should mention, too, that on the shoulders, uh, you didn't see it at first because you were directed to the platforms, but there actually are two spots that are almost like chairs made out of stone. Uh, and that's where Azkazix sits on the right hand uh, of uh, or right shoulder of the creature. Chair. Can I sit on the other one? If you want to. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit of a climb up, but oh. there are handholds essentially in the, the chest of the creature. And so you're sitting up on the left hand shoulder then? Yeah. Would that stack with my ring of protection? Uh, it does. Cool. Uh, okay, so we have uh, Zach is going to that upper pillar and Azkazix on the other. I just want a nice view. Okay. And I'm assuming, like, if I just turn around, I can see in the back. Yeah, oh yeah, okay. yeah. It, the chair itself doesn't move, uh, and you do realize that while the chair has a little bit of a dip in it, does not have handles, does not have arms. Okay. Uh, and uh, she shouts at the creature, and it rises. Make a dexterity saving throw. 14. 14. It pitches a bit as it rises, and you find yourself kind of grabbing onto the edge of the chair and then kind of holding on. Uh, as it straightens and, st and stabilizes, it becomes a lot more, uh, un a lot less uneven. Uh, but you have a feeling that it's a little bit of a dangerous perch up here. Uh, even as Kazix sort of flared her wings slightly once as it raised, just to balance herself. Uh, can I use minor conjuration to like make a guardrail? <laughs> uh, the only limitation is how big is the minor conjur conjuration? Uh, I think it's, it's like hand to palm sized. Three feet or ten pounds. Damn it. Three feet or ten pounds. Okay, yeah. Yeah, uh, essentially, it just as a rigid barrier that, I mean, how is it hanging on? I guess just. It's kind of like, you know, like in those, in the, in those like amusement park rides, there's like a barrier that's in front okay. of you. you can it's, you can it's, hold it's, on to. it's like a squared hula hoop, I think, yeah. probably. So it <laughs> slips much. over the back where there's a little bit of a, mm -hmm. of a backing and then kind of holding on. Sure. Yeah, I'll, say, like, kind of I'll say they'll give you advantage if you need it for, okay. uh, for holding on. Uh, it's not a permanent or, or perfect thing, but it, it's, it's there for the hour. It's there for, for a while. <laughs> Uh, how is he carrying the pillar? Uh, it's just in on one on the, the front uh, part okay. of the of the the platform. The platform does have a barrier around it, mm -hmm. so if you sit down, you're actually staying behind the platform. It's not. It's only about two feet high, so you're not hidden behind yep. it. Um, but you are uh, grabbing on, and then it it stands up uh, again, kind of not awkwardly. It seems very certain and sure-footed. But at the same time, uh, it may, while it may have been transformed for, for carrying people, it's not a way that it moves normally. It's not a pack beast by nature. But nonetheless, without any effort whatsoever, you guys are lifted up. Now, Clark in the back, mm. the one thing you do see right away is the, the partially exposed uh, backbone essentially of this creature is another one of those Paluxian bones mm. uh, and it flares a little bit bright white as you're back there and then it proceeds to move for most of you there's probably no comparable description the only one that kind of comes close is Alzera because you've studied animals because you've seen how they move because you've you've spent some time being an animal and even then you're having to kind of stretch your imagination to imagine what it must be like to be a flea on the back of a horse the movement is steady and regular it takes several strides for each of you to find that spot where you can wedge yourself in just properly so you're not bouncing around too much it doesn't take large springing strides it's more of a steady plodding at first very slowly. Once it crests that first hill, however, and hits what essentially is a road at that point, it begins to sprint and then gets faster and faster. Yeah. And soon the ground is moving by you at a rapid rate. You can see the lights of Ember Skull ahead of you. Uh, what they had described to Amrun before is this strange double light of red visible on the, uh, in any direction, or not in direction, from anywhere in this, in this realm dead ahead. The pace that you would have the equivalent, to give it in terms that you would understand, its walking speed is 160, mm. and its sprinting speed is 600. Mm. Uh, it is because it, it, it lopes along steadily. 
you can see behind you, Clark, that everywhere it is stepped has made an impact on the ground, a permanent record of where it has traveled. Mm. This is amazing. <laughs> the wind up front, uh, actually, in in the chair that you're in, getting the the full on uh, the the full on kingly treatment, if you will, flying high, over a hundred feet in the air, moving along. This is an incredible creature. Yeah. Um, you've seen some some constructs, you've seen a few elementals, nothing of this, this size or magnitude. Um, its arms are, are moving along to give it, not as an animal needs that, that sort of internal rhythm, but literally throwing its hands forward, each of them a large meaty palm, or not meaty, but large uh, thick palm of stone, using that to further propel its momentum forward. And you travel. Within a few minutes, you can see where you had been, uh, where uh, Festering still claims hold of that other side. Ahead of you, you make out the vague uh, stretches of bridge, that massive bridge you knew to be down there. You can now see it with your elevated height as well. Um, at least you make out pieces of it as you note that the bridge starts up. But once before it reaches its apex, you can see it has now been sheared clean off. Pieces and parts of it are now sitting in the water themselves. Uh, and uh, shouting over the wind generated by the motion, Azkazix uh, says, That does not look good. I did not know the bridge would be broken. Can it jump over it? It will try. Uh, what? I don't have spell anymore. And as it is, she shouts another command in Infernal, uh, which is cross. And it seems to be heading straight for that. Clark would like to secure himself to the thing. Okay, how is Clark doing such? Clark has rope. Clark has rope, okay. Yeah. So he'll, he'll tie a loop around his belt. And Give me a sleight of hand roll. Sure. Because everything is kind of jostling around. This will determine how good it is. Uh... Thirteen. Thirteen? Yeah. You've got it fastened. Um, you are going to jostle around a bit, but you're pretty sure it'll hold if you were to get thrown off of it. Okay. Um, That's it pretty won't much be we... as easy to to release if you wanted to. Clark's got a dagger if need be. Okay. Uh, you look over... He is not emotionally attached to the rope. <laughs> you look over to the other side of the platform, and you see a familiar face. Uh, on, on the strange body that's sitting there. The body itself seems to be large, bulky. Uh, you'd measure it probably six foot of the shoulder, or probably maybe even six and a half feet of the shoulder, but it's seated now, dressed in uh, some sort of strange... It doesn't look like leather. It has a darker look to it, a, a sheen almost. Uh, it has something familiar about it, but you're not quite, uh, not quite figuring out exactly what the familiarity is. The head, however, is that of Marius in this strange sort of elven form that he's taken before, uh, sitting there beside you. This is a terrible way to travel, he says to you. Or the best. Do we or hear this? Clark will look around and see if anyone else acknowledges his presence. Uh, doesn't seem to. And this would be behind you at the moment on the other side okay. of, of the creature yeah. from the rest. The others don't seem to react. Okay. Agreed. But you, it's the only way. I always think there's more than one way, but right now, this one will do. You... You're going to get yourself killed. I can't have that. If it's your command, it'll be so. Oh. You get to decide these things. Well, and he kind of claps his hands together, and this strange, larger form claps its hands together. The hands themselves are as bigger than his head, weirdly enough. And you notice uh, a tinge of sort of greenish gray in the skin, strangely enough. And then you kind of realize, wait, that's a that's an orc's body he's wearing. Hmm. And he's put it on like a suit? Okay. It's weird. Well, if it's commands you want, and he kind of reaches into a small pouch on his, uh, on his belt, then I'd best suggest, no, command that you hold on to this and he kind of reaches in and pulls out and the the black handle 
of the glaive emerges out of this small, tiny pocket, impossibly fitting somehow into it. Uh, and the shadows wreathe around it and, and, uh, and flow off of it. And he kind of flicks it out, almost like he's flicking out a knife, as he flicks it out to its full extended length, uh, reaching out, and you can see the blade extend into that form a little sharper than before, maybe. Hmm. I would suggest you hold on to this. Clark offers his hands. And he hands it to you. It'll take some time for you to get adjusted to it again. But I think you'll like it. We have an understanding. We do. Good. That's so much time saver. Oh dear. You might want to hang on. Oh. And at that point, the rest of you at the front can see that it's taken longer strides and longer strides and shoves off the bank. Dirt rail, whatever's next to me. <laughs> Uh, all of you will have to make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Uh, Clark and uh, Zakis, you get it with advantage. So I had said I was holding on. To yep, the yep. The, but that's advantage. that's the basic. Everybody's holding on. You have not not not, not anything else that's going to make it easier. Well, that's not good. I like the advantage because I got that's, a one and eight and an eighteen. So that is definitely not good. <laughs> Nineteen total. Uh, Nineteen. Okay. That is a six. You got a four. A four. Yeah. How about Clark? Uh, one moment, please. Twenty-four. 24. Okay. How do you do the math? So, you feel these large steps going forward. Um, you actually see uh, uh, Azkazix's his wings flare out a little bit as she steadies herself. Not really all that bothered by it. It seems more like a reflex than anything else. Uh, as it takes a leap and jump. And you can see the bridge now, which spanned the entirety of the Grey Brook. The, at this point, uh, about 60 feet wide, and it leaps. And you can see the broken pieces of the Grey Brook beneath you as well, and it hangs there for a second. Um, Clark, you kind of end up pitched up a little bit higher, and I'm almost, almost suspended for a moment, the rope holding you taut. Uh, you, uh, 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 Zakis, gripping on, probably a little white knuckled. <laughs> do this as the entire body shifts forward as it makes this leap. Um, for Amrun and uh, Alzara, however, you see the ground as, the, as the, the chest is pitched forward and you start to feel yourself lifting up off of that. But you also have the closest view, as you see as it's leaping through the air, large tentacles reaching up and grabbing onto its leg. And I think we'll take a break. Ah, oh, man. As I set up things <laughs> for a moment. So, for those of you watching at home uh, or watching uh, on the, on YouTube, uh, please hold. Uh, it probably will be less than 15 to 20 minutes. I say that not knowing how long it will be. You know, the, 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 the truth about the shadow for me is that I'm kind of like, I know this timelessness. Uh, I'm never accurate with time anyway. But we will return. And then uh, I think we'll be fighting something. That might be the case. Fight, be right back. fight, fight. And we're back. So, before we broke. I'm not on the screen. Oh. Oh. No. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Uh, before we broke, you were all riding on the, essentially the shoulders of a massive behemoth. Made mostly of stone and seemingly powered Powered by Paluxia. It's a new brand that I'm working on. It, uh, it was running along and trying to cross over the Grey Brook to make it eventually to the Ember Skull. It made several large steps and heaved and was doing pretty well, although the riders on board were getting a little jostled around. And then large tentacles rose up out of the Grey Brook, which... Uh, Clark, Elzara, and Zakis know is no brook of water. In it live thousands, if not millions, of tiny creatures and some larger ones. The tiny ones being some larval stage, perhaps, of mind flayers, otherwise known as illithid. 
and the Illithid themselves, with their strange transformed and corrupted creatures also living within. The bridge it was trying to, to pass over was broken, its pieces piled up inside the, well, for want of a better word, we'll call it water. But as the tentacles grabbed across the creature, pitching it forward slightly, uh, Elzera and uh, Amrun. Amrun, sorry, uh, were pitched out of the front gate, uh, just ten feet, landing in the water. Oh no! Uh, you do each take wow. Do each take six uh, bludgeoning damage, essentially, as you collapse in the water. But you do both have to make Constitution saving throws. Ten. Eleven. As you collide with this water, uh, Amrun, you've been in water before. This does not feel like it. It feels not only slimy, but somehow moving and writhing. And you feel some of it slip up your sleeve and writhe into your skin. Similarly, Elzera, nearby your ankle, you feel something burrow in. No pain, but pressure. And, and you're aware of it. The two of you are floating in the water. Um, Clark, I you see had... this happen to Zach, and I'm like, shit! Not Zachus, Amron. No, no, uh, no, 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 she has oh. seen him. Oh, I, yes, I you seen have seen this I... happen. Exactly, yes. And, I literally uh, yell, it, it was a bargain with a fae that got rid of it last time. Uh, at least, that's what the rest mm-hmm. of them think, or presume. Um, with the unicorn. The, uh... <laughs> a dying unicorn. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that poor unicorn. That was such a weird and terrible moment. Um, <clears throat> however, Zakas, you've managed to brace yourself and hold on up to the top as the as the the behemoth sinks down into the water, basically up to its stomach, uh, but manages to somehow right itself. Uh, looking over the edge, you can see the tentacles are kind of wrapped around and they're starting to pierce in the rocky side of this creature, holding it taut. Clark, from the back, you see also two tentacles doing much the same. On the other side, beside you, Azkazix uh, is now kind of perched. She almost hopped up onto the chair and kind of rode it down like a surfboard, uh, wings outstretched to make it easier for her. The tentacles, however, uh, do hold it fast, and you can see, bobbing just on the surface, a little distance away, a strange bulbous head. No eyes, but just a large, open mouth full of teeth. It seems to be the source of the tentacles holding on at quite some distance. Uh, let's see. You also note on the other side, rising up out of the water as you land, one of the strange squid-headed beings. But this one seems different somehow. It seems almost supported and, and wrapped by the uh, creatures around you. Similarly, over on another side, uh, yes, I'm using, uh, I forget his name, but it was from the set of uh, Hellboy miniatures mm-hmm. that I have, but I happen to have them and I thought, what the hell, because I don't have enough Illithid miniatures. Three more of these rise, smoothly coming up out of the water, although facing the wrong direction for a second. And mm-hmm. as we begin the scene, we need to take stock of who goes when. Roll initiative, please. Look, a decent roll. There are two digits. There are two digits on that roll. (laughs) I got both the digits. That's why I feel so good. I got above a 10. So that's a, uh, oh, look at you. And, oh, look at you. Good job, guys. Yes, I'm cooing at my minions. So, 25 to 20. 21. Look at that, Clark. First off of the mark. Uh, there you are. Uh, 15 to 20. 19. Okay, 19 for Zacchaeus and 17 for Elzara. Is that what I heard? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, you switched the colors. Did I switch the colors? Yeah. No, I think I reused one by mistake. 
you know, PCs are still all red. No, I mean the colors of the actual clips. Oh, yeah. I think they got they got pulled free. Uh, let's see. That was 15 to 20, 10 to 15. Uh, 5 to 10. Oh, okay. And somewhere below 5? 2. 2. Our moon's a little shaken up by this crazy experience that he's just had. Anyone would be. Clark. Yeah, well, uh, best to probably unloop the, the belt safety harness thing. Okay. It will take you an action or you can cut it. Uh, he'll take an action. Okay. You might need that rope to so free people. Untie the knot. Now you're free and ready yep. to go. Um, you're a few feet above the water. Uh, those pieces that are out there yep. represent broken pieces they, of the bridge that are visible. They look solid. Okay. Uh, so I've done an action for the tying. Uh, for the, yep, for and the untying. i got to move left. Mm -hmm. And a bonus if you have one. Uh, not really. I mean, I could I'd add more and more if that's okay. It shove Zakis down with us. I would like to climb. <laughs> I would like to climb the the the. I think it should be a colossus, not a behemoth. <clears throat> it's fair. I was searching for a word, and that was the first one that came to mind. Five, ten. Now I'm gonna induce a running jump. Okay. And jump nineteen feet, which I think is enough to get down here. Okay. Relatively safely. That's within your uh, your yes normal uh, one. According to my martial archetype, I can now do a nineteen foot running jump. There you go. Cool. So yeah, you step up. You see uh, see Zakis in this strange sort of contraption that he's held himself on with, and then dive over the other side, landing firmly as you do. Oh, would you like an athletics roll for that? I know uh, if it's within that distance, you can jump. Okay. Like most people have to stress to get that far. Okay. But you don't. All right. Um, that's my actions. Okay. I'll reserve a bonus. Maybe it might come in handy later. All right. Now, let's see. What's this guy going to do? Hmm. Uh, probably doesn't need to. I appreciate the alternation between, like, us, you, us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say that I planned that, but that would be untrue. Uh, let's see. The show is scripted. <laughs> Did you notice? Know <laughs> Indeed. Uh, let's see. All of the thinking fake. All of the thinking is fake? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, why not? Uh, this one rises up, floating above the, uh, the water, even now with the shoulders. Uh, you can see its tentacles flare outward. And it leans forward, its eyes gazing in that direction. And a wave, not entirely visible, almost like your internal senses of being are catching it, uh, flows outward towards Askazix. Who actually needs to roll initiative? Come to think of it. So she'll be coming up soon. Where are you, Azzy? I'm going to call her Azzy from now on. I don't think she'll appreciate it. She'd probably fl flay me alive for it, but. <laughs> well, you're the one controlling her. <laughs> That's the advantage I have. You guys can try this, but I think I have the advantage. You are a creator after all. Scary as that thought is. Where are you, Azzy? Oh, okay, yeah. Well, she held an action because she would have gone next. So she will be right here. And uh, go just before Zakis. But we'll see if that matters in a second. As this wave of psychic energy flows over Zakis and as uh, as he as uh, as Kazax. No, what is her name? As 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 How am I not getting it right this time? I get it right every time. So, uh, it's not that one. It is that one. That is an intelligence saving throw. Let's see how she does with that. Uh, surprisingly better than I expected. Six. How do you get a six? Because I rolled a two. I think your bonus is like plus eight. No. All right, so proficiency oh, yeah, bonus. Uh, it's not proficiency four. bonus, it's your, it's your saving throw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so 12 total. 12? I think, well, because you have plus five or plus yeah, six. Yeah, two plus six plus four. 
Yeah, plus six plus four is ten, plus two is twelve. Okay. Our proficiency Might is plus five. It's not proficiency though on saving throws? Yeah. Some of them are. Yeah, it is. Not yeah, well, if, if you're, if if you're, you're proficient, proficient in it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, actually, are you proficient? Yeah, it should be a plus five then. <laughs> so what's the so. total? Thirteen. Mm -hmm. Thirteen. Still not. Yeah. All right. As the wave of yeah. psychic energy passes plus over five. you. Oh, okay. I know because D&D &D Beyond does all my math for me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I wish we could be sponsored by D&D &D Beyond, but no, we use it all the time. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, I use it all the time, but it's a pain. I'm probably dead. Uh, that's physics. I gotta write her existence in here as well. Uh, yeah, that's going to hurt. That's 44 points of psychic damage. Wow. And you are stunned. What's 80 minus 44? 36? Yep. That's exactly what that is. Oh. So, being stunned, uh, you are also incapacitated. You can't move, you can't speak, or if you speak only falteringly. Uh, you automatically fail strength and dex saving throws, and attack rolls against you have advantage. You do, and you will have the chance to roll at the end of your turn. Well, at least I don't get aggro from anything. <laughs> she saved. Where are you, power? Uh, weirdly enough, I think it's an all or nothing effect. So. You hear Azkazix swear in the infernal, uh, something along the lines of, "I will, I will use your um, face ropes to tie my boots." And she screams at it, and, and I you find yourself kind of like woozy. Uh, that is its go, her go. She's going to fly at it, draw her longsword, and fly straight at it. Yep, yep. Okay, so. This couldn't be further from each other. Oh, yeah, okay. As she lurches forward, this first hit is strong and sure. Uh, and flaming. Oh. And not flaming, oh. but there is a green light that crosses across her sword. Oh. That's max on that one. <laughs> uh, great, now I've got to remember. As the sword go, slices down and does slice off a few of the facial tentacles, leaving a sickly green burn behind it. But as she moves and tries to swing backward, the tentacle still wrapped around her sword. It just kind of ends up going weirdly flaying, and the sword just sort of goes fly, or the tentacle goes flying off in the other direction. And by the time she recovers, it's already moved back a little bit. But that is her turn. Zakis, you find yourself, your head ringing. Your mind has just been assaulted like too much beer on a school night. Black hammer brew. <laughs> I don't Black hammer brew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, except not pleasantly. 19 for the end save, so that's plus... Four plus five. So you, you blink, you think back, you know your mind, you start to go through some of the sort of meditative exercises uh, that you were doing when you were younger, trying to trying to remember everything, all these words, and it starts to work. Mama. And you, uh, <laughs> you shake your head, you feel your limbs go free, and breathe deeply. You are no longer stunned. I breathe deeply, everything stinks. <laughs> I'll just kind of like sink into the chair to avoid any uh, further Oh, well, that's the end of your turn, right. unfortunately. Uh, I was probably like already leaning in the chair. To be fair. All right. <laughs> the three of them moving forward. Those guys. Hmm. Where is the third guy? Yes. Uh, yep. Okay, I see him on the screen. Yep, there's three of these guys. What is there? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, was that guy flying the entire time? Like, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, hover, hoisted, he's hoisted by the water. fly spell, because I'm pretty sure that's concentration. <laughs> he doesn't have to concentrate. Oh, no, they're fucking. Not if it's its own some, kids. Some people can fly. Yeah. Or, in their case, levitate. Right. Oh, hi. I just assume it's a pile of junky water he's standing on. These two, as well as the other, do seem to look like they're floating. 
like just above the surface of the water. When you look closer, you can tell that, or you can make out that the water itself seems to, uh, let's see if I can make it there. That's as far as it gets. Uh, seems to almost push up on them as well, making contact. Uh, you even occasionally note, especially the two of you now that close to them, that there are little small of, uh, th of those little little small versions of those things actually falling off as well as going up, almost as though there's an exchange with them as well. However, two of them move over to where uh, the two of you have fallen into the water. Uh, one of them will lean forward and its tentacles reach out to try to grapple onto you, Elzara. Uh, will a 18 hit, first yes. of all? Okay. If the 17. tentacles wrap around, take 21 points of psychic damage. Uh, that's gross. And that's, you that's are currently gross. grappled. I am going to make an intelligence uh, check as well. How many? 21? Yes, I think that's what it is. I'm going to uh, take uh, that damage from her and take half of it to me. Okay. So I'd you don't take the damage, but you're still grappling. A little little uh, dart of blue and white jets out from you, and you see him flinch a little bit, brain freeze at that moment. Mark. So I don't take any damage. No, but you still do have to make an intelligence saving throw. Okay, that's double digits. Look at that, 23. 23. Uh, you I feel you feel the, the sort of psychic uh, explosion that fades away quickly. It crosses over your brain, and you kind of blink a little bit, but let it pass, which is good, because you feel it would have overwhelmed you. But you are still grappled. Uh, the other one attempts the same on uh, Amrun. Actually, no, from that distance it can't. Uh, yeah, he's actually too short away, so he will... Hmm. This is rarely ever works, as it uh, points one of its tentacles in your direction. Uh, there's a little flash of gray green energy, and you uh, see a little glimmer in its eyes. That's it. That's all the effect okay. it has. Uh, Elzera, cool, cool. You're currently wrapped up. I give him a thumbs thing. up for the. the... <laughs> I cool, dude. Cast freedom of movement on myself. Thought that was coming. Uh, it's a little difficult with the burbling in the water and all of that, but you find yourself able to squirm easily. And I spend five feet of my movement to get out of the scrapple. Okay. Are you going to swim in the water, or are you going to try to make it up onto the rock? I'm going to try to make it up onto the rock. Okay. That will require a climbing check, or it'll take a hard... Uh... Half movement? It'll take, it'll take normal movement if you succeed the check. Otherwise, it's difficult terrain. So, Ugh. acrobatics or athletics? I mean, I don't mind using half my movement. Okay. I have 45 movement. Sure. I just went out of this water. Uh, basically, yeah. it takes 10 feet of movement to climb up out of the water. That's all it is. Yeah, I have okay. 45 feet of movement. Yep. And I'm yep. unimpeded by difficult terrain. Oh, yeah, with free movement. movement. Yeah, yeah. So, actually, it takes you the, the, the 10... Well, it would have taken 10 just to climb, but it's 10 in total to be up at the top. Where do you want to be? Where else do you want to go? Um, As the thing is, is, the tentacle's kind of slipping around you, trying to grasp on, and you hear this... No, actually, you hear nothing other than the sort of slick sound of like mucus-covered tentacles. Uh, I'm going to go to here. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, and say jump. Okay, your it's shield about to get real. pops it's up about to around get real. you. So that's an action, a move. And a bonus. And my turn. Okay. Uh, that is... Uh, hmm? Yeah, where did Clark go? I'm at the front. Did you not go already? I did. Continue. Okay. I'm just reading the yeah. tag. It says, it says ah. <laughs> oh, okay. And it's like, I, did, I, did I skip somebody? I was trying not to do that anymore. All right. You've been succeed. Uh, I've had one I round. I assume ah so is this thing. It is. I was assuming. So... My face. What is it going to try to do? Um, yeah. 
Um, it pulls itself forward from where you are, uh, Clark. Mm -hmm. You can kind of tell that the extended tentacles probably come from it, and it seems to be pulling itself in towards its target. Uh, it kind of moves strangely, kind of bobbing as if it's swimming in the water itself, but really just a projection of these massive tentacles that are under it. Mm -hmm. uh, its large single maw comes closer to you. You can see now this thin slit which covers a, a singular eye around it, and the eye gazes towards you mm -hmm. and seems to be enthralling, make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, oh. I'll probably fail. I'm really bad at this. Fourteen. Fourteen? Is that barely enough? That is exactly what you needed. As you feel your mind overwhelmed briefly by it, for a moment, it was everything. Yeah. All the world. I've done this but before. But then you shake it off and realize that it almost made you his yeah. uh, tool. That is its turn. I'm Rune. Oh. Um... Hmm. Not really much of a climber or a swimmer, to be honest. That's not water. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna throw you a rope, but now I gotta do a thing. I can't believe not it's not water. Mm -hmm. Well, I will attempt to. Uh, So you got it floating through the water? Mm. No. It feels very strange and completely mm. alien to you, especially you who knows water so intimately. Mm -hmm. It feels as though a thousand tiny bodies are squirming all over you. Yeah, I'm just going to try to get up here beside uh, El Zera and the uh, squid head. Okay. So you're going to try to climb up? Yep. It's either a difficult train spending twice as much to get up, or you can try to make it quicker. I'm just gonna go with double the okay. double thing there. So you uh, <laughs> step up on there. And I'm assuming I'm actually going up two levels because I'm in the water. I'm not going from the surface. So one, two, three, four, five. That's, that gets me plenty far anyway. It's like, uh, hello. Um, well... Yeah, this looks like it would be a good time for a spiritual weapon. <laughs> mm -hmm. As the watery spear so takes form. Cast that there. And it gets to stab the one between me and it. All right. Uh, is that 28. <laughs> That's very much a hit. Probably should have cast it at a higher level, but... Three, or sorry, six force damage. Okay. It stabs in its back and it seems to shuffle a little bit forward, half grabbing it as it uh, retreats. Now I can... I cast a spell. I can still cast a cantrip, can't I? Uh, so long as the cantrip is is uh, not an action. Or what, your, your spell is a bonus action. Yeah. Was, yeah, so yeah, you can, you can definitely do that. Okay. I am going to Sacred Flame him as well. He can make a okay. deck save against a 17. Well, he can try. Uh, that is 11. Okay. Uh, so that is... 13 radiant damage. All right. Almost as with the two, and they were, working in concert, the, the swirling, somehow solid form of the watery uh, spear catching it off guard as little motes of uh, water spin around it, stabbing into it. It seems completely off, ga off guard at the moment. Uh, that is your turn? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, all of you hear the grating sound of the massive behemoth uh, twisting and turning, trying to move, and then turning its head, which doesn't really turn very well, uh, looking down and <laughs> it's pawing around trying to grab the tentacles which hold it. Wow, bounced up onto the edge. Uh, as it, it grabs a hold and you hear this smashing sound, but it looks like it has a fistful of itself and not the tentacle. No. Clark. Uh, let's turn and try to kill the thing. 
All right, then. If you step up to it, it kind of hovers almost over you. I've got reach right now because I'm going to use the glaive. All right. Uh, do you I want would like the basic glaive stats? I think I still have that I've got the basic ones here. Do you? Okay. Yeah. Where did he get this at? <laughs> That's an excellent question. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll we'll answer later, Zill. So. Uh, 26 and 17 to hit. Uh, 26 hits, the 17 bounces off of its hide. Okay. Uh, 10 plus 4. 7 uh, slashy damage. Okay. And uh, does it do its magic damage now, or do I have to have it dedicated? Uh, it does. Okay. It does. It doesn't do the bonus damage, but yeah. it does the regular necrotic. Uh, I believe I can reroll ones and twos, if I remember correctly. That's your uh, your feature, right? Yeah. That's the great weapon feature? I think so. Yeah. Uh, Ones one and two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's better. Uh, three more necrotic. Okay. So seven and three more. So as it kind of curves across its, uh, its hide, leaving a little shadowy trail behind it, it winces and kind of pulls back and shifts in this weird, odd way that no humanoid being would do, which is why the second... <laughs> whiffs right through okay. and misses. Are you going to move or bonus? Uh, no, I think it's good. We'll we'll hang tight. I got its okay. attention now, probably. I definitely do. Uh, now, to the other larger, stranger creature on the other side, facing off against uh, Askazix. What does he <laughs> want to do? Uh, I think it's going to reach out and try to grab a hold of it with its tentacles. If that sounds like fun. Oof. However, the tentacles are whipping out towards it. Uh, Asgazix whips her wings and kind of keeps herself floating there, managing to dodge around those tentacles. Uh, now we are at her turn. And she laughs. Fuck him up. And the laugh is terrifying. It is as though she is enjoying this in a twisted sort of way. And that may not be far from the truth. The rolls are not enjoying it, however. Oh, no. <laughs> are you serious? Okay. Uh, the first strike is true, once again. It seems like that first strike is, is doing good for her. All right. Okay, that's still a pretty significant slash. Uh, as the sword comes slashing down, again, this time catching some of those retreating tentacles, even one of the larger, uh, almost trunk ones, gets gets torn up by the edge of this w w wicked blade, a grand little green pulse. This time, however, it does kind of withdraw in itself, and despite her best attempts, she cannot seem to pierce its hide. Wait, who is she? She's attacking right there. She's attacking the larger of the, of the illithid. Okay, yeah. so she's not attacking this guy anymore. That is the guy. Okay. He's the bigger one. He's, he's the bigger one. Okay. Yeah, he's different. He looks significantly different. He looks more 2D. Yeah. He's a little, yeah. <laughs> he's a two dimensional character, not one. Uh, Zakis, you're up. Now, How bad free from your mental prison. Um, been scuffling. Several of the tentacles have been cut, but it's hard to tell with their strange physiology. Uh, she's definitely stabbed it significantly a couple of times. Okay, well, it's going to get a firebolt. Oh, I should also roll that. Oh, look at that. That'll be fun. 18? Uh, 18 hits. Wait, uh, actually, wait, hold on. That's, that was the wrong modifier. Where is it? 15. 15 uh, misses, actually, as you detect that the fire, the, the, the bolt kind of was true for a moment and seems to have impacted with no effect under some hard surface just below its, its uh, clothing. And as a bonus action, I'm casting Fire Step. Boop. <laughs> What's the range in Fire Step? 60. Okay. Uh, as you find yourself, that is the far end of the bridge. But, or no, actually, sorry, that's the right direction. Yeah, yeah because we thought That's forward. where you guys were. Yep, yep. So that is the far end of the bridge where you want to go. Okay, so there's no water like behind me? Nope. 
Okay. So those steps do indicate the size of the gotcha. bridge, essentially, what's remaining. Uh, okay. That was Zakis. That leaves it to them. Uh, as it sees it, you vanish. It finally climbs up there, and then, boom, you're gone. Uh, Bye-bye. See it. What can it do at range? Uh, well, okay, yeah. It climbs up to the top, enraged, its tentacles flailing madly. Oh, that's beautiful. And uh, the tentacles spread out and swirl, and a blast of energy comes forth. Uh, I will need Elzera and Amrun and Zakis and my poor guy to each roll intelligence saving throws. Nat 20! Okay. So like 33. <laughs> 17 on the dice, so 25. Okay. Uh, did my guys... Seven. Okay. My guy survived, which is good. That would have been embarrassing. Uh, the two of you, uh, you're familiar kind of with the same effect. This time you you brace your yourself mentally and let the the energy kind of wash over you. Not even not even for one iota piercing your thoughts. Uh, you see this strange fail, flailing thing. Kind of wonder what's going on. Feel this wave and then you go, not today, Satan. Uh, the other one that's there uh, seems to react, and you can kind of see that it twists its head. Its tentacles staying, staying in place as it twists its head, and there's a, a furrowing of the brow as it looks to its, its ally. We just did this. However, um, Amrun. Mm-hmm. You take 27 points of psychic damage as you feel your brain kind of rattling in your head like a bad cart ride and you are stunned this whole thing is a bad cart ride <laughs> uh, the one in front of you turns back to to uh, to the two of you realizing that uh, you are stunned uh, will attempt to wrap you in its tentacles uh, that is a 20 24 to hit so mm-hmm uh, the tentacles wrap around you. You take ew, 22 points of psychic damage. 22? Yep. Okay. And you are now grappled. Uh, I will say you can't be stunned again because you're already stunned. Uh, but you are grappled as well. As you see, it kind of turn and twist and envelop uh, Amrun tightly in its uh, tentacles. Uh, the third one. Where did the third one end up? He's, He's in between the two. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, he will. Hmm. I'm gonna turn this completely because nope, I'm that's, be it that that's anyway. perfectly yeah. fine. I got a seat on this side myself. Uh, that one floats over, and then floats up beside you. I'm just gonna put him there for convenience. It's technically, he's floating here, but whatever. It's not gonna make a difference in a moment. He's floating on the side of me. Yeah. 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 And just kind of hovering. Uh, he too will attempt to to engulf you in his tentacles. Nat 20. Oh no. Ooh, that could be interesting. Uh, sorry, how much damage did you take, Pat? Or, uh, I'm rude. In total? From that last hit, yeah. 22, I think. 22 psychic, yeah. Sorry, that should be 11. I rolled too many dice. Okay. Uh, because I just realized I was rolling double for, for that. It's the wrong wrong attack. The other one had the bigger one. For you, however, uh, 28 points of psychic damage. You are not grappled, but you still need to make an intelligence check as the things wrap around you, and almost like an electric eel emitting electricity, it emits a psychic pulse. 22. Yeah, which rolls over your brain like no nothing, no problem. I can make these in saves. Make them all day. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Not let's see. <laughs> uh, that is Elzara's turn now, or it is Elzara's turn now. Oh, so you said he's floating. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just because it makes a difference to what I am about to do. Thank you. I was going to do the same. So. Um. So. Let's. So all of these tentacles seem to be going to the same creature, right? Um, you haven't been able to notice that yet. That's something he noticed because he was closer to the creature. Okay. Sorry, I didn't talk. Cool. 
I also just assumed. So. Cool. I mean, they seem to be coming from something, and that's the biggest creature around. It's mm -hmm. a reasonable assumption, but not something you know. And they're tentacles, and you probably want to kill them. <laughs> and they are so, burrowing in now to the sides of this of this uh, behemoth you are riding. It's trying to take our pillars. I'm going, I'm going to go big. Uh-oh. Yay. Uh, so, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, <laughs> I can't get that far. Uh, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think I know what's coming. Yeah, and I can get the buddy, yeah. Okay. Is that a chain yeah. lightning that's coming? Uh, no. Nope. Firestorm. Mm -hmm. Woo! Go big. Uh, so I need a deck save. Oh man, I shouldn't try to chew and smile at the same time. That's hilarious. <laughs> uh, from this guy, this guy, this guy, oh, this right. guy, and in my brain that guy. But if it's the same creature, then no. Yeah, uh, well, the tentacles aren't independent necessarily. Uh, they're attached to something. But uh, okay. well, let's do these guys first. What kind of save is it? A dexterity saving throw. <laughs> uh, is it a magical effect? Yes, it is. Okay. Yes. Uh, Seventeen. Uh, that's a 17 exactly for that guy. Uh, 19 for the second one, and the guy who's high up gets a 4. Okay. Uh, I need a fourth one because the tentacles. Yep, yeah, big thing. Uh, let's see what they have for that. That one's not quite as exciting. That is a 14 for the tentacle. Okay, so half on a save. Twenty-one, twenty-nine, thirty-seven. On a fail and half on a success. So twenty, it's thirty-seven. 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 Okay. So I rolled just two go ones. Through these guys. Oh, yeah. uh, let's <laughs> I rolled. See. All right. So that's that. That is. Has been rocked a bit, so he's got. Uh, ouch. Uh, and the other guy. And then. Which, Burn it with fire. Which tentacle or tentacles did you catch in that? I think it was a green one. Uh, the, the green, green one and one. the black one. Okay. Both of those are removed as they burn away. Oh, yay. Spring. Oh, cool. I catch one burn. of them. <laughs> the others are not dead, but there is this vicious sound of. Kind of, I don't know why, reminds me of wet fish slapping because basically they have these nasty looking tentacles and they're they're vigorously uh, throwing them around. They look they look rough. They look very rough. And this one. Uh, that tentacle as well. Okay. Uh, no. So I was like, wait, there there was another one because they don't need to be in the line. They just need to be touching by a corner. So now yeah, I will so say that. Uh, okay. It uh, still holds on to uh, Amrun, however. Okay. And I have attacked both of the people beside me. Yep. So I can fuck off. <laughs> uh, Freedom of F. One, two. I'm going to. Uh, yeah, I'm going to risk it. I'm going to try to cross the water. You're already infected anyway. I'm already infected. <laughs> Um, as you kind of look back yeah. and look away, you realize that the pillar is still sitting on the platform. It somehow didn't fall off. Which is a mixed blessing. At least it's there and not somewhere buried under the water below you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For now, I'm going to go there. My phone has a message out saying that Bell Mobility is giving me money. I've gotten three of those today. Yes. Yes. If you at home are getting messages saying Bell Mobility is giving you money, they are not. It's a scam. Yep. Um, yeah, for now I'm going to do that. Okay. Because I have no strength. And that is my turn. All right. Go big. Uh, in big front place. of you, the creature screeches actually making uh, out loud noises at the the uh, fire which seems to have burned away its exterior or extended exp appendages now we know who owns the tentacles uh, that's not close enough <laughs> and that was not close enough as well so uh, you are the one beside it 
and so it decides that you are the one which will, its its anger will be Yay. taken out on. Oh, no. uh, <laughs> as it uh, it kind of closes its 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 mouth for a second, and then you can see the the entire body kind of undulate a little bit. <laughs> And it spits out this mucus uh, uh, pile at you. Make a uh, constitution saving throw. Gross. As it splashes over you and the stone around you. Eleven. Eleven. Yeah. Uh, you feel uh, uh, the dripping uh, acidic interior guts of this thing uh, uh, flowing over you. You take uh, eight points of acid damage. Okay. And make a note, you are diseased. Okay. I can deal with that. Uh, that is that part. Then it swings, and you can see that it has, although it looks to be only tentacles, it really also has one which is larger and thicker, the extension of its body, almost like a tail, which it then spins around and tries to Slap attack. Slap me with it. Uh, where are you? Tail. Your number is 13. That is a one, as it completely misses you. No. Uh, and you kind of find yourself kind of uh, slipping a little bit on the acid around you, and you kind of bend down a little bit as the tail goes right over you, got in its own way. Okay. Uh, that is its turn. That leaves us with Amrun. Mm. You can make a save to try to be not stunned. Mm -hmm. Nope. What did you get? A ten total. No, I'm afraid not. Mm -hmm. Your mind is overwhelmed. You can barely even remember your own name at this point. Uh, once again, the large creature Wait in the center. Minute. Mm. I have favored by the gods for my one sorcerer level. Okay. Uh, if I fail a save or an attack roll, I can roll 2d4 once per short rest to add to it. Oh, there you go. Let's see if this works. Although that's still reaching you. Oh, jeez. Hey. Wow, okay. Well, let me say, uh -huh. the save was seven, 17, guys. so uh, that was the only way you were going to succeed. Wow. Uh, with, the, with the D4s. But, yeah, you... you that's used. A little bit, uh, almost like before. trickling water comes to your mind. And that seems to grow louder and louder, like you're stepping near a bowling brook, washing away the pain and the pressure on your mind. You are grappled still, but you're mm -hmm. no longer stunned. Yep. Which is good, because that could be really bad. Yes. Uh, as I was saying, the massive creature uh, twists and turns once again. The tentacles it was reaching for at its front no longer there. So it lurches forward a little bit. The uh, guy on top manages to float just a little bit above it, so he's not actually affected by it. Uh, as it strains and stretches against the tentacles, which have it by its back. Ooh. And you see the whole thing twist suddenly as it pulls and snaps this tentacle. Hey. Uh, and once again, the creature beside you screeches. Oh. Uh, Just a, is this representing the Colossus? Yes, or yeah, the, yeah, that it, is okay. the Colossus. Yeah. That's okay, why there's okay. big shoulders and platform in front and back. Yeah. Sorry, I, I thought I made that obvious. Oh, no, no. Uh, that means it is Clark's turn. What does disease do? At present, it does not seem to do anything. We'll find out later in very that, dire that's, circumstances. That's, that's okay. <laughs> I'd like to kill this thing. Okay. That's what I'd like to do. Um, you feel very itchy. Yeah. And like uh -oh. the surface of your skin is twisting and turning slightly. Uh, 17 and 23. The 17 bounces off its high, but the 23 finds another hold to cool. pierce it. One. I can't take a reroll that one. Uh, 14 regular damages and uh, one necrotic. Okay. It looks as though you pierced its hide and do stab inward, but it is a large creature extending well below the surface of this you're not sure if it's even contained its critical organs here above this water right i but, have a question but you hit it yes uh am i aware of its threat range roughly of its threat range yeah for the purposes of movement and attacks of opportunity i mean the fact that it's holding on to the yeah, behemoth it's, itself it's suggests large... that it's okay. it's hard to escape okay. from okay in that case I'd like to try another flying leap. Okay, where to? Uh, I'm going to get to the main line mass of the bridge there. Okay, sort of across its its uh, vision. All right. 
Uh, this one, because it's there and threatening, I will have you make an athletics check. Sure. Uh, athletics or acrobatics, your choice. Just tell me which. Athletics is fine. I'm good okay. at it. Not that great at it. 17. Yep, that's enough. You clear the distance easily enough, yeah. uh, despite the, the intervening chaos of its limbs. Where? Yeah, hold tight there. Okay. That was Clark. So, uh, the epic battle that still continues floating on the other side seems to be consumed with trying to consume her. Go, ask his eggs. Uh, and latches onto her. Oh. Uh, the... Vague pulse of energy. All right. The vague pulse of energy pushes through her. That's not right. That's closer. Um, and she uh, lets out a an angry scream. Oh. And then says no more. And goes limp in its grasp. Uh, that is her turn. Now we come to her. No, oh, actually, that's its turn. She barely moves. No effect. Zakis. You see your new ally yeah, right. caught in those tentacles. Yeah, okay. And you can only imagine that what has happened is raced through her brain, much like what you had experienced. You also see that, actually, at this moment, Amrun is going through a similar experience, yeah. being wrapped up, although now he seems to be at least squirming in his bonds. I'm drowning in fishmen. <laughs> Firebolt on this guy. All right. Try to rescue her. 15 plus 11, so 26. That's a hit. Yeah. <laughs> Not going to miss him a second time. Seventeen, fire. All right. Oof. As the little burst of fire uh, strikes him in the side, does he let go? Uh, it does not let go. Does he look a lot? Does he look terrible? Uh, from that distance, it's really hard to tell. And they have a really weird alien physiology. Even as you, get, when we were closer, they have this strange sort of thing where the central part of their body itself is narrow, narrower than you would expect for any sort of organs. It may not even have them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, that is Zakis. You going to move or no. bonus action? Okay. Well, I could bonus action teleport. No, actually, so all this is land, right? Beyond there, yeah, yeah. The water is lapping up on the area, but it's not covered yet. I'll move back a little more. <laughs> okay. So just pretend I'm like. Well, put yourself on the edge beside, and just. Well, since you're not likely to be standing in the water, just move back over here, and we'll assume that's just extra distance. All right. All right. Uh, now it is time for the crew of them. One of them still has uh, you in a grasp. Hmm, okay. We'll want to do that later. Uh, that one. And that one. Okay. So they are not going to worry about that. Uh, yes. Uh, this one will float over to where, where Elzara is uh, in front of you and attempt to grapple you with its tentacles, <coughs> not knowing how futile such an action would be. I do get a 13 to hit, which I don't think does either. So, yeah, you kind of easily move, almost as if they are moving in slow motion, no, no longer afraid of them connecting to you. They have a whole bunch of spells. Let's do the spells. I like the spells. Oh, oh, oh. Hmm. Okay. That's a weird one. Zakis. What? The other one seems to focus on you. And somehow, strangely, it's gaze is the only thing you see. Which one? Oh, uh, it guy. is a charm effect. Make a wisdom saving throw. 16 plus 4, so 20. I get to, no, plus 5, so I, I get to apply my proficiency bonus to that, right? Uh, it's whatever your saving throw is. If you're proficient in that saving throw, I think you are. Wisdom? Okay. Yeah. So 21. Uh, yeah, as you feel the pressure on your skull, uh, 
um, you again kind of run back to the rhythms of, of the rote that you would have done as a child to, to shave it, to save it off. And while for a brief moment you feel like there's a pressure a <laughs> ring almost around your head as if you're wearing something on your head, it vanishes in an instant. Which one was that, by the way? That was the one that's up on top of the thing. This one? Or nope. Oh, way up there. Okay. The other one pulls Amrun into the water. So it pulls over. Can I resist? Because I'm not stunned anymore. Uh, you're not stunned, but you are grappled. Uh, you mm -hmm. haven't. Yeah, I can probably just. Probably with, with the grapple, that can move at half speed. Yeah. Uh, which for it is very slow. <laughs> so you're basically at the surface of the water. Yep. Being dragged in. Uh, that is their turn. Doo -doo -doo. Time for Elzera. You look over and you, with with chagrin, see uh, Amrun dragged into, or drowned, dag, uh, drowned off, dragged off of the platform. Dragons. Dragons, Dragons eaten your friend. No. Cool. Um. <laughs> In a beautiful line. Yeah. You could say that. I don't have my pretty walls, but I'm going to put them in a wall of fire. Okay. Uh, you can't actually see the one that's grappled Amrun, by the yeah. way. It's down yeah. below the edge of that, that barrier. Yeah, but my thing's so, 20 feet tall. Uh, so, I, I, like, so you're going to presume where he is? along the surface, yeah. Okay. Because I'm going to put it along. So Hopefully it hasn't moved me in a way guy. that... Okay. You don't know where Amrun is exactly. I will say that. Yeah. That's fine. fine. Yeah, he's a he's a water guy. Fire won't bother that much. Ooh, uh, that hurt. Uh, <laughs> and I'm going to put it so that the heat is on this side. Oh, okay. Cause... All right. We'll hurt it all then. Yeah. So. All right. Let's uh, just. So a deck save, I believe. Uh, nope. There's no heat on their side. It, but I'm putting it so that they are in it. Oh, okay. All right. Just put a draw a line down so I can so we have a little jagged line that's there. Uh, All right. So I mean, uh, I would put it so that it like would start here. Okay. So I don't want to draw near things. But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. As you light up a, a, a jagged line of fire. Um, um, so I need saves. All right. Is that a deck save? I and that's a magical give effect. Give save me two spell. seconds. I'm trying to get the right spell level here. What? That is not... That is not the level that I was casting that at. I'm just <laughs> casting it at... Four. Level nine? You don't even have level nine slots yet. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Fourth level. Uh, uh, Dex, yeah. Okay. Uh, that is. Doo -doo -doo -doo, they are terrible. That's a 14 for the first one. That's oh. the one that's grappled Amrun. Amrun, you have to make a Dex save at disadvantage because you are currently grappled. One. Oh no. I'm sorry. Uh, the other one I talked. The other one is almost as bad. Actually, no, it's worse. It's 10. <laughs> so the two of them definitely two, failed, as three, did Amrun in this case. Four, I think Amrun looks better. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, ooh, if it makes you feel better, that damage is horrible. I mean, technically it makes them feel better, but also worse. It makes them feel less bad. 19. Okay. I rolled a 1, a 2, a 3, a 5, and an 8. So no. That is that. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, the one right in front of you is normal. Is that starting from you, or is that starting down back there? So it is starting from here. Okay, so the one in front of you is not affected. Yeah. Okay. So straight line. Anyone in it has to make a save. Okay. And if that tentacle... On the back. Yeah, there's one more oh, tentacle yep. back here. Uh, but that it's not in it, so it doesn't make the save uh, on its turn if it ends its turn there. Okay, sounds good. Uh, any, okay. And anything uh, that ends its turn. Here's the funny part of it. Uh, as you see, the fire lick up and over the behemoth itself. 
as the, the rock and stone starts to crumble along those sides. Because <laughs> while not exactly living, it's still a creature. Is there. Uh, let's see. Do you want to move or bonus? Uh, I have not attacked the one in front of me, uh, so I will not. Okay. Um, you do see the two of the others uh, that were caught in the blast uh, cringing yeah. and looking very bad. Okay. Let's put it that way. Uh, let's see. Now it is that creature's turn. With you in front of it. It's true. What is it going to do? Can't do that again. Can do those again. So is the like the rock creature? Mm -hmm. Does it have a turn? It does. It's the end of the turn. It's that slow. Okay. Cool. So each time on its turn, it's been trying to grab and pull one of the tentacles off. Okay. It did successfully last yep. time. Pull, kind of lean forward. Cool. Sorry, I hadn't registered that. Yeah. It, I've been focused on. It has very little it can really do, but can when it does, it, it's pretty effective most of the time. Uh, it just failed. It he rolled a one the first time I tried to do that, which Fair was thing. kind of embarrassing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, let us do... That's already done, so it's happy with that. Can't do that again, so yeah. I think it's just going to slap the shit out of you with some tentacles. I like as it. As they come up out of the water and uh, try to smack away at, uh, at uh, Clark. Thirteen's your number. Wow. Those are, that's, a, I didn't, wow. Let's try that third one. Okay, the third one hits. So the 11 and the 12 miss. Just? And the 24 hits. Yeah. Jeez. All right. Well, the two and the three is kind of embarrassing. Well, that's cocked. Uh, that is eight points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. Uh, you do not have to worry about the other effect. Right. Uh, then it will spin around and once again try to smack you with this tail whip. Try to anyway. 13. Wow, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, 14. Uh, but that'll, that'll live. Um, I just can't, I haven't rolled that badly for a while. It's kind of impressive. Oh, and then maximum damage. Excellent. Almost. Uh, that is 19 points of bludgeoning damage. Um, as the tail kind of, uh, kind of takes a, a double swipe at you. Eventually landing solidly across your back, forcing you to a little half step forward. I'm Rune. Mm -hmm. You can feel yourself being pulled under. You're half buried or weather already. You can feel whatever it was that's, that that uh, swam up your arm. Uh, feel almost like it's responding to the same hum and throw and 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 hum and throw of the the uh, the liquid around you like it's getting into its own element and mm. surging in the same direction now well the f let's see yeah first thing i'm doing is i'm gonna siphon life on this <laughs> okay so you're just holding me all of it all of it okay Woo. uh so it gets a con save what is the uh the the, the amount 12 dice of necromantic damage. <laughs> Jesus. But it gets a con save to uh, let's have that. Let's see. Yeah, it does, technically. That's a 12. <laughs> does not as, beat my 17. As it figured it was trying to pull from you, and you 12. draw from it. Uh, let's see. Well, is it more than 14? Six. Is it more than 14? <laughs> uh, if it wasn't halved, uh, no, it's 33. Yeah. At 14, it stops. Well... It only goes to third. It only, it still keeps one hit. All oh, right, okay. Because I can't bring it below one. So at thirteen, it stops. So I, out of that, and, I get thirteen hit points. And uh, it writhes madly. And then I stab it with the uh, spiritual weapon. Holds on to you miraculously enough. It's like the last that last strand that it has is just like hey, not letting go of my prize. Yeah, twenty three to stab it with the spiritual. <laughs> yeah, weapon. that hits. And you feel it go limp, still kind of embracing you, but. Not uh, effective anymore. Don't end your turn in the wall. Yeah, and then I'm attempting to get. Yeah, you feel quite that ill. That was disgusting. Uh, that is your that is your turn. Uh, it's going to try to uh, strain against. I think there's only one tentacle left now, isn't there? There's one back here. Yeah, so yeah. it's going to try to strain against that one. You got this, big rock dude. Does it have this? Um, 
Is uh, that tentacle uh, on yeah. its turn needs oh, to make a wait, save? Uh, the tentacles doesn't have a turn yet. Uh, oh yeah, no, the thing did go. Big yeah. thing, yeah. All right, it should have taken damage. Natural twenty. Natural twenty. Okay. Right. But uh, how much damage is it? It might still take it. Give me two seconds. Mm. Oh, the behemoth also has to take its damage. Colossus. Yeah. I already called it a behemoth. I'm right, sorry. Fine. I've set an unfortunate pre- precedent. <laughs> uh, it gets a twelve yeah. on the save. Oh yeah, I suppose no, it's still there. Never mind. Yeah. Well, because. It already took damage that turn when she cast it. Uh, yeah. But it's at the end of its. But at the end of its turn, turn it takes damage again. Yeah. Because it's standing there. Uh, well, I don't think you take damage twice in one turn, though. Should have for it, first cast. At the, it, turn. at the end of its turn. So it takes damage when she cast it, and at the end of its turn. Yeah. yeah. If it is in it. Yeah, but there, during the round, mm-hmm. uh, it's like moonbeam. I think you only take damage from no, moonbeam no, once. No, it actually does but, twice in this okay. case. It's a but really this wicked one specifically spot. Specifically says. Yeah. When, okay. when yeah. you cast it, if you cast it and it's in it, then it takes mm-hmm. damage. Because it is not in it, it did not take damage when I cast it. Right. Okay, I thought it did, because he just. Oh, yeah, no, sorry, damage. you're right. It, it actually. Well, no, it's in it because the line crossed right across it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So. Um, oh, that is three ones. That's gross. Oh. Three. Let's go, Tentacle. Ten, 14. Ho ho, Tentacle survives. <laughs> uh, and it looks a little bit more. More beaten up along that side, the black scarring of all the rocks now, some of it crumbling away. You don't get the sense that it feels pain, uh, maybe frustration at this particular point. Uh, but now it gets to go after the tentacle, doesn't it? Uh, actually, yeah. Actually, it it doesn't get a save if it's if it ends its turn within ten feet of. It's mm-hmm. not moving, so yeah. 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 So. Uh, however, it unsuccessfully tugs at the tentacle, despite mm. the tentacle kind of barely hanging on. It's it's still holding it. And it's kind of reaching back and splashing into the, the liquid, but not able to get a hold of it because it's just in that really annoying spot, you know, that some things will grab you. Uh, Clark. Let's do the action surgy things. All right. We're going to do three attacks. Um, the white dice, I'm taking ten off the roll. Five off the roll. Five, yeah. Five off the roll. For a great weapon master? Great weapon, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, the two I'm doing normal. All right, then. Do your damnedest. Dang. That's good. The white one is a not 20. Oof. Oof, that's going to hurt. All right. So oh, that's going to hurt a lot. 19, 20. So 20, 22, and many, many, many. That hits. All okay. three of those hit. Cool. So the normal ones. We'll do those first. Sure. Clark yeah. angry. Twos became ones. Yeah, sucked. Oh. Um, eight and one necrotic. Okay. And then nine and one necrotic. And then double dice for the other one, right? Yep. Yeah. Cool. Which is also an additional, uh, what, plus ten? Tri- triple dice, actually. Mm. One more for the weapon because I'm an orc. Oh, yeah. Ish. Yeah. Orcish. Oh, that's a 10. There's a, there's a 10 in there. That's nice. I'll keep that one. Mm-hmm. That's a little bit better. Hey. Okay. Uh, 14 uh, plus 8 more is 18. Um, 14 plus 8 is 22. 14 and an additional 4. Oh, okay. 18. Sorry. So that's you one. said 14 plus 8. I was like, yeah. Mm, so okay. sorry. Yep. Um, 7 and... Eight, nine, ten, and uh, seven more is um, seventeen. I have no idea who you're adding this that, up, but you did that math really weirdly. <laughs> okay, cool. I have no idea what you mean. Because I'm looking at I'm like 21, 24, 20, 27. It should 27. be twenty-seven. Okay. Yeah. That twenty-seven plus? plus your modifiers. Yeah. Yes, twenty-seven plus ten four is four once. Sorry. Twenty-seven plus four. Four is thirty-one. 31. Plus ten is forty-one. It's a great yeah, that. Master. Okay. Yeah. Whew. It's yeah. not dead, but you, I'm like you, 10, 27. <laughs> you kind of take a couple of quick uh, slaps, cutting off one of the forward tentacles and, and damaging the tail. And then the third one hooks in and you just rake it back across its body, opening up a massive wound that sort of gushes this ooze of green 
And then you're going to do an action surge? Or no, I don't need to, because that was a crit. Oh, yeah, so it was. As a bonus action, <laughs> I will attack again. All right. Is that a single attack or two? Single. Single. Okay, good. So make sure. Uh, 18 plus will hit. Oh, yeah. Uh, three and four, seven, eight, nine more damage. Nine more, okay. Yeah. Still Take still that, you frothy floating, bastard. But you have cut a very massive chunk Hooray. right out of his body. Um, as you, some of you kind of suspected, nothing exactly in the way of internal organs, just writhing masses of smaller beasts. I'll just separate all those organs. Um, it is now, Whisk. that is your bonus in action. Yeah, it's all mine. It's all okay. my things. Uh, Kitchen let's sink. see. Uh, the continuing fight over there. He's now immobilized it. You might have heard a noise when that all happened. I don't know. Oh, it it it, it doesn't make a lot of noise. It makes most of the noise Clark right Wood. there. Oh, mm -hmm. Clark would, yeah. What's Clark's battle cry? Uh, it's like that Predator Schwarzenegger yell, which just goes, seems to go on forever. Then it stops. Uh, let's see. Probably just... Oh, no. What? Oh, it's not incapacitated. It just... Just grappled. Whew, she's dodged that, then. Uh, she, it'd be, yeah, sorry. There was a moment there where bad things were going to really happen. M only mildly bad things are happening. Oh, come on. Give us the bad thing. All right. Come on, it's going to be fine. We'll be all right. What's happening in As here? once again, it sort of grapples and grips onto, the wings are now folded in towards the body at an awkward angle, and it's just crushing uh, Azkazax uh, in its grip. It may have even forgotten everything else is there, just enjoying the, the prey that it's captured. Uh, you know what? It's going to move down to the water, start to drag its prey down. Right. Oh, um, oh, never mind. Mm. Uh, that's its turn. Her turn. Can she do this? Natural friggin' 20. Woo! As she resists, her wings burst up out of the... <coughs> Actually, sorry. Her wings stretch a little bit as she comes back to consciousness which is the only thing she's actually able to do but she gives out a defiant cry uh, to this this evil creature uh, even more evil than she is Zacchaeus you see your ally moving now but swearing still struggling huh? subtitle swearing in abyssal <laughs> swearing in infernal excuse but, me yeah. yes Something along the lines of, I will fry your limbs for food. Yeah, right. If I were standing here, mm -hmm. could I hit both him and the mind player? Uh, or the him who? The illithid. And this Which can, he light, can he lightning bolt that one and that one if he's you, over here? While avoiding Elzara and Askazix. <laughs> I'd say uh, you could roll an Arcana roll to see if you can line up the angles properly, given how strange the magic is. But if you are the master, master of the magic... Well, I, the, the dice says I'm not. So I have like a 17 for Arcana. Yeah, that's not a problem. Um, you're so able to carve, least... carve it out so that if you move over to that side, essentially... And I'm uh, standing here. Too. Yeah. You find a way to okay. angle it just carefully enough. Although, Elzara may lose a hair or two, and you know how particular she is about her hair. As you cast Lightning Bolt. And what is the save for this? I think it's a save, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm casting it at level 4, so... Okay. Deck saves. Deck saves. Deck save again. These four guys and their deck saves. That's an 11. And that's a 2. <laughs> the guy on top the, the, trying, the to, trying to hold still, trying to uh, to uh, stay up there. Uh, yeah. Save is 19. Yeah, no, nowhere near that. Do an 11. 11 and a 2. Right, the 2 is not really good. Tell me what the damage is. 10, 20, 25. Okay, then. 20, 27. <laughs> Uh, as the lightning bolt surges through the one in front of Elzera, it explodes. Its shallow level of, of uh, skin over the writhing mass of the creatures that make up the water below just simply explodes as they go out in all directions. Make a dexterity saving throw, Elzera. And the other one on top also similarly just collapses 
No, I was shredding, the hitting the one over there. Oh, that one. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, actually, it has a better chance. Uh, da, 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 da. Eleven. Uh, it it no. rolled a twelve. No, I still hit. Okay. Well, then, actually, one of them survives. Oh. Um, the one I dropped was an eighteen. Do, do, do. Uh, that I need to know. How much damage was it? Thirty. Uh, Thirty-seven. No, twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Yeah, twenty-seven. All right, that hurt it a lot. Oh, actually, in that case, uh, he might raise physics also has to save. Ooh. I thought and it was rolls. lining it up, so I... Yep, but they're basically in the same spot, because it's holding her. And she rolled a one. Uh, she does not have advantage. What kind of magic is it? Not Just one like of those. Okay. Not one of those. Hey, you didn't like her anyway. It's fine. I did like her. Uh, no, that's, that's Zacchaeus' problem. He's, he's very happy with demons. I'm not. <laughs> Just understand the language. Yes. Good scholars understand languages, okay? Yeah, no, that, that hurt a lot. Okay, um, they are both, uh, the two of them are still locked in this angry embrace, uh, trying to kill each other, although it seems like the, the larger one is being more successful. The other one does explode, and explodes all over... Uh, all over Elzera. Uh, yeah. You feel them kind of writhing... Twisting over you, but apparently not interested as they flow down into the water. Oh, and uh, I missed these st- er, first step af- as a bonus action back to where I was before. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, that is Zacchaeus' turn. That was a lot. Uh, let's see. One of those guys still around. What is he going to do? The guy on top of the creature. Uh, does that happen again? No. He's going to dive into the water. <laughs> so the one that's on top of the creature just simply dives down. Here's the interesting, funny feature. Oh, oh, no. The uh, the behemoth makes a grab for it as it goes through and just woo, too <laughs> slow. Uh, and that is all of those guys. Elzera. Hair was kind of frizzed up by the electricity passing by you and then right in front of you. It sounds like he fled. Okay, so he's off the Yeah, ground. he's he's un- he dive, dove under the water, so okay. he's gone. He fled. Uh, so there's nobody left in my wall. That's right. So I'm going to say bye-bye. There's, probably, there's the tentacle. He probably would have died anyway, actually, to be honest. But that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I don't want to damage the... Mm. We our, need the pillars. <laughs> I, I don't want the, our ride to be more damaged than needed, so the wall is gone. Okay. <laughs> I have the player. I'm very sad that I forgot my, my firewalls. Mm. I don't get to use them often. <laughs> um, I'm going to give Azzy over there some help. Okay. What do you like to do? I would like to... Uh, random question. How's everyone doing on health? Pretty terrible. They're all dead. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty Clark, terrible. Clark's been well, chewed upon and barfed on. I'm around half, but I yeah, can same. change that pretty quickly. Cool. Now that I have access. I'm slightly the hook below half as well. So I'm going to cast a Mask Cure Wound. Okay. Uh, is that, what's the range of Mask Cure Wound? 60 feet. Oh, okay. Because cure, cure Wound is normally touched, so I forgot that one. Mm-hmm. So. Nice. Are we all getting hit by that, sure? Uh, I think I can get all of you guys. Up to six targets, so I can take a step forward if needed. Okay. Yeah, with yep. with a step forward, you'll just hit Clark. Mm. Six cool. creatures, so it should be all four of you. And I'm assuming Azzy as well. Okay. Yep. So and you want to heal the behemoth? Yes. Okay. That there makes six. Um. Uh, the ra- uh, the radius is thirty feet. It's Mask your wounds. Yep, uh, six, but centered six, on a point sixty yeah, feet away. Sixty foot range, but a thirty foot radius for the actual yeah. effect. Uh, so if you, you centered on the behemoth, you here. could actually get everybody except for yourself. Yeah, and Zacchaeus. So, I'm okay uh, with this. Oh yeah, and yeah. Zacchaeus as well. I'm like out of danger most uh, of the time. I'm, I'm okay with this. Because <laughs> the behemoth is more or less in the center point between the three of you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, if you center it just a little ways from me, I think you could get you as well. Well, that's. 
Yeah, I don't think you can get her and him. Well, he's not right there. Right. He's I, actually I back here. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 but I, I think yeah, if it's cast like right here, you can get her and him and you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And you. Yes. Yeah. And you get the healing. Plus you get the three, healing. Eight plus four. ability for modifier. Oh, sorry. Mm-hmm. It have no effect on him. <clears throat> Construct. Oh, jeez. What's up with my D8s today? <laughs> Four, six, seven. Oh, my God. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. <laughs> eh, it better helps. than nothing. It definitely yeah. helps. I rolled a one, a two, and a four. Mm. I mean, yeah. Yep. My Thank D8s are rolling you. ones. All of my D8s are in jail. That is the that is the danger, unfortunately, of dice. Literally all of my all right. D8s are in jail. <laughs> all right. No more spells for you. No more, no more healing spells. I have three D8s. Mm-hmm. I have 12 if you want to borrow So, uh, you send out healing yeah. energy <laughs> to each of them. Each yeah. of them feel somewhat better. Uh, that was an action, so bonus or move? Uh, I'm going to back up some more. How many? Uh, just uh, to two, yeah. Um, Do you want to go off the steps? Or? I need to keep stuff in, in vision. I need to see what's going on. Okay, the creature uh, that Clark is facing off against. Yes. Uh, seems determined. It should be. I've, I've smacked it a few times. It's going to try to bite you. Okay. Um, no, it's going to try to grapple you with the tentacle, first of all. Okay. Do, 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 do. Yeah, Does 13. a 22 uh, hit. Yes. All right. Wraps a large tentacle around you. You take 14 points of bludgeoning damage Kay. and make a dexterity saving throw. Dex saving throw. You got this. Uh, 15. 15. Yeah. You manage to wriggle out of the tentacle's Ooh. grasp uh, as it tries to pull you in tight and you kind of hold the blade out kind of scrape it along the surface. Mm. Uh, it bad. pulls back a little bit and then just swipes at you with the tail. Uh, do, do, where did you go? 23? 23 to hit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and 15 points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. As it uh, nearly takes you off your feet. Uh, oh. Make a dexterity saving throw. Sure. Yeah. Uh, lots. Um, 27. Yeah. It, it, it kind of, <laughs> it kind of, it hits you in the back and, and it thinks it's going to sweep you off of there and you just kind of roll, pivot up onto the, under your feet and then plant your feet back down again. All right. Uh, that is its turn for that. Yeah, I can't really do much more there. So, Mm-mm-mm. I'm ruined. Okay. Hmm. You see a fate similar to what you were almost experiencing uh, befalling potentially your newfound mm. uh, ally. Oh, over there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. I'm saying Clark's not a newfound ally. Mm-hmm. He's just some guy you met. Uh, I go way back. Well, yeah, for bonus action, I'll send that off that way, but I'm not going to travel far enough. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna move over to that edge and uh, I don't really have any big smashy spells, but uh, yeah, what the heck? <laughs> I'm gonna siphon life off of it, <laughs> off of the big guy. All right. It gets a con save. It does indeed. Against 17. Rolls an 11. That seems a little low. What's that with the modifier? That is with the modifier. Okay. <laughs> that is with the plus 6 modifier, wow. to be honest. Which is kind of surprising. 11 plus 6 would have uh, Your monster rolls were like my int rolls today. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's had a couple of really good ones, but yeah. 10, 13... 23, 28, 44, that's all my channel. So you take 40, 
Okay. Uh, and feel the last or 30, tug. Or 39. No, because it 40. keeps one. Okay, so it's 41. Okay. As you so feel that last tug ref- uh, stay, stay there. Um, you can have 40. Woohoo! Poof. Uh, and that's all I can do. Okay. That's, that's, that's all you that's can do. That's lots. <laughs> God, you Once again, do anything. the behemoth tries to strain. Actually, this time it tries to twist in place to try to pull that last tentacle free. Nah. It's apparently twisting in the right direction for the tentacle to be easier to hold on. It's rolled up five. Uh, Clark, yeah, you feel invigorated let's, suddenly. Let's kill the thing. I would like to kill the thing, please. I, I think that you may very well. You see it's uh, the edges of its wound kind of gray and uh, and putress. Several of, the, of those little creatures that were inside it just sort of drop and flop into the water. Good. It seems a hollow shell of itself. I killed baby elephants. Good. Yeah. Trained all their life. Uh, in its weakened state, what a 15 happened to hit? Unfortunately, it hit some of its outer hide, which is still still of, solid. It's a lot of whiffing. Not yeah. a lot of hitting. Is that Can all you your hits? Surge? I rolled a 5 and a 6. Wow. Mm. So. Could you actually Welcome surge? to my turn. My no. Turn. I need... I need. I did that already. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> And it was impressive when I did it, but mm. I don't. I only have one Unfortunately, of Unfortunately, the, the way that it's sort of thrashing and the, the diminished state it's in, it's half the thing it was before, which means it seems almost twice as hard to hit. Strangely, mm. uh, it is that thing's turn. Uh, it is not in pain because it didn't hit by that. So, uh, yeah, it just goes below the surface, dragging uh, uh, Askazix with it. You do oh, not that see thing it. at the end. Okay. Yeah, you do not see it, or her. Uh, that's its turn. But it is Asgazik's turn. Let's see what she does. Yep. I can see her doing that. That's kind of funny. Um, all right, just got to roll a couple more things to my me. Buffering. <laughs> uh, you see the sword <laughs> rise up out of the water. The uh, the head of the creature pinioned on the nice. end of the sword as she sort of floats and then pushes up with her wings and flies upward. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was literally three hits from her longsword at disadvantage. Wow. Uh, and I didn't actually get a chance to roll the poison damage. Uh, she sliced it in several pieces. Yeah. Uh, however, um, let's see. No, you're not close enough to notice. Okay. Uh, unless she is... No, she's not. All right. That is her turn. Zakis. There's one remaining tentacle hiding, like mm-hmm. on the colossus. Yep, it seems it's to be still still here. held by one of them. Okay, so I'll firebolt that. Okay. Nineteen plus. Absolutely hits. Eleven. Plow. It's at least three fire damage. Uh, so let's it. find out how much it is, because three would be funny. It's not three. Well, there's <laughs> uh, there's two threes there. Yeah, uh, it 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 just sort of cuts right through it, uh, and the creature over there once again lets cry. Are you going to move or bonus? No. Okay, Elzera. Uh, I. You see the 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 behemoth kind of jolt forward a little bit because it's been straining to try to free itself. It seems to be um, free. It steps in amber. <laughs> so <laughs> wish. Um, I am going to give Karg a hand. Um. Supportive hand. You got this, bro. Golf clap of appreciation. It's true. Uh, it's worth at least a plus one. It's a windspiration. Oh, uh-huh. there we go. Uh, I am going to... Attaboy. I'm participating. I need my medal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to moonbeam it. Good old classic. It does look really bad. Uh, it's a level really, two really spell. Okay. I mean, it used to be a major thing. Now it's like, eh, it's a level two spell. All right then. 
So the brightest I'm light you've really seen. I'm just really low here. on range things right now. What uh, what kind of damage is that, by the way? Radiant. Okay, just want to check. It's gonna plug. And it is a way. save at on its turn. Yep. Gotcha. All right, the moonbeam encompasses it. See, my D10s can roll actually. But it won't take damage until its turn, right? I know. Yeah. Okay. I just, just want to I just want to double check. I just always just sure. forget to roll it. So. All right, that's Elzera lighting up the sky with this pillar of white. Noticeable probably from quite a distance away. Uh, it's turn. It's just 40 feet high. Okay. Uh, yeah, but there's no brilliant white light in this place. Okay. It's, it's just uh, pillars. Yeah. It's just pillars. Because the pillars it's are probably like big light beacons too. It's fine. There's already a big yeah. pillar of light right here. Sure. Let's see. It is going to choose to flee. Yeah. Cool. Well, chooses it's to use its action to disengage. Well, it does its turn, so it rolls a con save. And rolls a con save. This is hilarious. Because I don't think that that's a one. That's an 18 So, damage. it chooses to flee. It looks like it's getting this this <laughs> this uh, this motion in place, kind of dodging and weaving, looking directly at you, and <clears throat> just sort of melts in front of you. Yeah. Um, Sorry. Still your kill. Again. But that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, the field seems to be clear. The water churns as ever around you, but no more do you see any s sign of aggression on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. uh, Asgazix flies back over to sit on the shoulder once more. Before my first step expires, I'll just like... Whoop. Okay. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Asgazix, I was trying to hit the bad guy. The, uh, the behemoth in the, in the middle reaches over a hand towards Clark as if oh. to step on it. Clark will run up it. And it... Uh, da, 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 da. Yep. Parkour. Uh, same thing for for uh, Amrun in front, mm -hmm. yep. and then steps forward around that pillar of stone or that that floating piece that's there, over to the other side and extends a hand once more. I'll climb back up. <laughs> Druid, fire burn. <laughs> <laughs> that was going to be its action if the uh, if not to her, but if the, if you hadn't killed the thing, it was like. Urgh. Oh no. Uh, but that's okay. It doesn't need to have any successful actions. You guys are killing it. Uh, however, turn into air. I will have, let's see, uh, Elzera, Amrun, and Clark. Well, I'm going to do something as soon as I'm sitting down. This is a, uh, this is a medicine check. Mm-hmm. Ah. She'll make it as well, but she's not From a me? medicine person. Uh, I don't have medicine. Yep, that means you're not rolling with any extra bonuses. Okay, well, there we go. I got an eight. Okay. Can I assist them? Uh, no, I mean, this I... is this is you in, you observing something. This is not you observing yourself. Okay. So you don't. It's not a conscious action. You're doing this as a reflective per perception. But okay. it made more sense to be medicine. Gotcha. So twenty-one. I didn't roll. Did I have to roll? Uh, no, sorry, you don't. Because uh, you were on the other side. Yeah. The three of them are closer. Uh, and what did you get? Ten. Ten. Okay. The two of you are kind of concerned with yourself. You can feel this thing wriggling under mm -hmm. your skin. Um, and you also feel uh, still quite ill to the stomach. You're feeling um, a little rough, but what you're noticing in particular is Askazix is scratching away at, at uh, her, her, the sort of her arm, where her shoulder and arm mix, and you feel like she was in the water too long. So you have a feeling you know what's coming next. She doesn't seem to be concerned by it. Orders the thing to march on and it steps slowly out of this liquid uh, and begins to charge once again. So, because I'm running away, I also have a thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I tell her to stop for a moment. Okay, she Cause. shouts at the thing, stop, cease, is probably what she say. Okay, uh, first, I'm going to cast on me, uh, shoot, where did I see that? Lesser... Uh, Why do we delay? It is dangerous here still. You're... We need Considering to how long you bit. spend in I've that been water. infected. You've been infected. And she, There's she, little things. They crawl inside your skin and they turn you into, a, in, into an illusion. She, she and, and I'm just like... <laughs> yeah, she, she looks at, at, her, at herself uh, as, when you say that and grimaces. Pulls out a wicked-looking dagger. Uh, I, I, I cast Lesser Restoration on myself. Okay. Now, that gets rid of a disease or certain conditions. The conditions wouldn't be anything unless poison works. Okay. But it will get rid of disease. 
Mm-hmm. Does that change anything about the creepy itchiness? I feel uh, it does. Uh, in fact, you feel the uh, the the writhing underneath the skin uh, increase for a second, and then something pops out of your sleeve and falls to the ground. Mm-hmm. Not dead. Okay. But <laughs> Rejected. Everybody, okay, everybody who, uh, well, actually, everybody line up. I present to you my foot. Yeah, it's like lesser restoration. Okay, and you feel that strange pinch of skin. That's all we had to do. It burrows its way up. None of you you had that particular particular ability, so it made it a lot harder. And you let it go, (laughs) but you didn't use it. But it also lasted for a lot longer before you even noticed. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that would be the other thing. We haven't actually mentioned that. What? Uh, did you get fully restored? Or are you still uh, oh, yeah, graying, you're sagging still skin like... with a transformed eye? I think, like, the unicorn blood restored it. Oh, right. I think yeah. you yeah, did yeah. that. Okay. Yes. Um, Good. Because that was getting weird. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Hard to remember. Okay. Uh, did Zacchaeus ever fall in the water no. or fight hand-to-hand with any of these things? Well, that's as far no. as you know. He popped around a lot. Yeah. I just got hit by the uh, psychic damage, and that was it. So I'm looking yeah. pretty well, rough. Yeah, well, I'm looking. I was like, do you fall in the water or fight any of these hand-to-hand? I do you get not. punches by or anything? At least okay. not this time. I was waiting for it. Not this time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to crawl up over the shoulder and say, Clark. You can smell him from the other side. Yeah, he's uh-huh. covered in, in mucus. Yep. Your skin yep. is itching now, yeah. and the further you step away from that, the, the lake, it feels like your skin is burning. Mm-hmm. Right. Clark, give me your hand. Okay. You see it pockmarked now uh, and, and, uh, and popping. Uh, that is not the same that you had. Yep. That's fine. This is this is level this is uh, the first round of uh, of uh, of things. Uh, I will cast lesser restoration on him. Okay. Uh, again, the disease outer, and poison are the main thing. The outer but, surface hmm. where all that redness and stuff is, is gathering sloughs off, revealing new skin beneath. Yuck. Gross. How are you feeling? Still feels kind of itchy, mind you. Right. And it, you can tell that it's all over your body, but only the exposed parts actually were able to fall off. Okay. Imagine having the chicken pox and then not having the ability to change your clothes for a week. Gross. Hmm. How are you feeling? Do you still feel infected? Make a medicine check? Uh. <laughs> Do you feel all itchy inside? Yeah, you feel totally itchy. I, it's gross. Clark, what do you do? Get it off. <laughs> Clark, where did the abolith touch you? <laughs> pick, pick a spot. Um, okay, uh, just a second. First, yes. Her. do we trust her? Yes. Okay. She does have a, dr- a dagger drawn, but I she's will. curious to see what you're going to do. Uh, I will, I say, if you let me, I will attempt to cure what ails you. She looks skeptical, but doesn't move. Okay. I mean, he did just heal us. <laughs> yeah. Lesser restoration. Okay. Make a religion check. Okay. Well, let's see. Okay, 25. Okay. Mm-hmm. If I'm watching this vlog, Conversion. Gonna... There is... <laughs> <laughs> Two-point no. conversion. No. <laughs> oh, weird. Crust. Mixed yeah. metaphors. <clears throat> uh, no, as the, as the energy is leaving you, you feel it reluctant mm. to enter her. Um, no, remembering okay. some of the stories and some of the things, though, that uh, were told, you feel the pillar not far behind you and, and almost instinctually reach out to it. Mm. The additional surge of energy right, reaches through you and pierces her. She steps back a little bit, uh, uncertain as to what just happened, but looks down in amazement as the wound uh, uh, spits out a small, uh, small creature, those small, same sort of mm. uh, pod-like creatures, uh, and she looks at it, stabs it with the with the uh, with the uh, blade of the dagger into the edge of the behemoth a little bit. It kind of squirms, and she drags the knife up, slicing it away into small bits, oh, and kicks it off the side. Hey, then I will. Uh, Is there only one? Let's see. Uh, Okay. Go through the bag. Diamond dust. Huzzah. Um, and uh, actually, I'll use the one that I bought for the group. Uh, so, 
I say, uh, I'm going to hold very still for this, uh, and I'll, there I go, and I start uh, chanting a spell, uh, I pour some diamond dust around you, and on you, you look like you've been to Great Rave, uh, and, I cast some diamond dust on you. and I cast Greater it's Restoration. Wonderful. Uh, which gets rid of an exhaustion and either a charm, petrification, curse, uh, ability score reduction, or hit point maximum reduction. Okay, what are you targeting with that? Well, if it's not a disease, it's probably a curse. Okay. So I'm attempting to uh, get rid of the curse, and I'll get rid of any exhaustion he has if he had any. Okay. He'll feel good. Um, you feel a burning sensation in your skull and you instinctively close your eye. Mm -hmm. um, and you see uh, yellow bile pouring out of his eye. Um, and when he blinks again, his eye is clear. The scar has been removed. Oh, oh dear. Oh, oh. It feels a little puffy and a little sore, but yeah. you are seeing, it takes you a couple of moments to kind of blink and get your eyesight back again, but that scar seems to have been removed. I'm staying out of this one. My apologies, I'm Clark. Uh, drama to occur. I attempted to remove a curse in case that was what was plaguing you. I did not realize it would do that. We can talk about it later. Mm. You can now walk at full movement, can't you? Maybe. You stretch the legs. How do they feel? Uh, you only had the one scar, right? Yeah. yeah. You have two, yeah. Yeah, the, the, that stiffness you were feeling seems to be gone. I feel better. No more long strider needed mm. to be prepared, yes. Um, but yes, perhaps we should talk about that. I don't... Curses are normally not something that is earned. Things operate differently in the shadow. It is a debt yeah. paid. Mm. I'm going well, to be like casting my If any further payment um, is needed for that debt... The I will take it as it was my. It was me messing around that uh, caught me that caused whatever problems arise. Because it worked, I assume it is Marius as well. Oh yes, I'm pretty sure I can't stop anything a god actually does, um, unless they want it to. Um, but tissue. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, gods. What about uh, <laughs> disgusting creatures? Do you still feel ill? You still feel itchy all over. Yeah, I, feel, I could use a bath. Mm. Well, if, Do it, I, if, if I examine him a little more closely, can I figure out... If, if you take time, but you, uh, Askazix is impatient yeah. at this point and, right. and says, we need to move, there if, will be more. All right, well, if it move. starts to feel worse, let me know. Yes. Okay. I'll see what I can do. Worst case scenario, maybe Pichero can do something. Before you're even kind of in place, she shouted to the creature, mm -hmm. and which you understand as move in a very insistent way. The whole thing starts to shake and rattle. You begin <laughs> no, to no, cast no. mending, but to your chagrin, you notice that the pieces that are broken are just gone, and there's nothing to mend to, unfortunately. Um, but there's a, 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 a grating sound up above you as you notice the sort of head of the, of the thing is looking down at you with vaguely appreciative eyes maybe it's hard to really tell it doesn't exactly have much of a facial movement uh, um, and I do pull my rope off my back and actually tie myself to the thing and as you get underway um, this time guardrail. as as Gizix does kind of note the different things you're doing and wait to yell the additional command to tell it to speed up and run and on and on you go this time dead set on the ember skull and that's where we're going to pick up next time uh, now, it's going to be, I believe, the 22nd of December is what we have scheduled right now for our next episode. I'm going on vacation for a little while. we got some other things coming up. We may have some other things happening in the feed. Uh, we're thinking about an alternate game. Additional content. Uh, additional mm -hmm. content. But we'll let people know. Uh, and uh, thank you for watching. We had uh, some folks drop in from here and there, sample a little bit. Uh, we really always appreciate that. So... Uh, before we go, though, we should let them know how they can find out more. On Facebook, you can find us at Legend of the Drowned Isles. It's a Facebook page, and there's a group, Watchers of the Drowned Isles. We, we talk any of those extra things that'll happen between now and the next episode will be posted there. 
And we are doing this on twitch.tv slash ENCAF1. But if you want to watch it on YouTube... Yeah, on YouTube, if you've seen this, uh, please like and subscribe to the channel and uh, gently press the notification button. We're not hitting it anymore? No, we're oh. not smashing it. Oh. That's rude. Okay. Actually, gently, hmm. ever you, so gently... You broke it, didn't you? Touch the button. <laughs> And uh, make a comment, too, because Facebook seems to like comments. Mm -hmm. It's true. You too. Even if you don't like us. Uh, comment on Facebook. Also, comment, comment on, on YouTube. So Absolutely. Comment everywhere, really. Mm. All right. Just say hi. We're friendly. We promise. Maybe. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, happy holidays. That's when we'll return. Bye. Yeah.